Alrighty, I think we should be live right now. Hey, uh, how you guys doing? Good to see ya. Mm -hmm. I am here. Welcome back to the live stream with Mike here at the Cool Factory. Just get my glasses so I don't get my eyes in pain from the, all the computers and lights. Um, these are really good at reflecting all the crazy things that are shining at me when I'm streaming. Uh, good to see you. Um, oh, this light is off. I like this light because it really gives me some backlight. There we go. Very fancy. Uh, how are you guys doing, by the way? Welcome, Bricks O'Brien, my dude. Thanks for joining. If you want to hang out in Discord, just let me know. If you don't have nothing better to do, just wasting time with an uh, internet friend, then go for it. <laughs> we can hang up in Discord. Um, Callum, welcome. Uh, we have Brick Star Wars Boy, as always. Gabriel, welcome. Rafi, thanks for joining Skirting Board Films. Hi, how are you doing? And C. O'Connor from Ireland is here as well. I'm doing fine, yeah, uh, impromptu Saturday stream, basically uh, it's a chill Saturday for me, which is not often the case, I have like an hour or two maybe to stream. This set was sitting since the last stream in the in the bags, so I want to finish the um, Bowser's Castle, obviously. Uh, I, I've been having a lot of blast with the starter course, I gotta tell you guys, ever since we finished that starter course, uh, on the last streams, my kids have, were having a blast with it, they were just playing with Mario all the freaking time. And that basically proves the concept. It really works for a person like me who's not into Mario and had fun with it, and it works for the kids especially. They were having a lot of fun with it, so they were playing a lot. It's in trash right now because they mixed things around, so it's my, my table is full of Mario right now. But yeah, we're gonna finish the Bowser's Castle, uh, assemble it and see how it looks like. I think it's gonna be a fantastic display set as well. And we're gonna have some fun. I think last time was bug number five was the uh, bug number four was the last one we finished, and bug number five is coming up next. I think we have like ten bugs, so it's not a big stream tonight. Today, tonight, I keep saying tonight because I usually do not stream in the midday of Saturday. Um, yeah, I got my app running. I think the phone is charged. Awesome. So we can just keep uh, building stuff. Yeah, and then we just assemble the castle together. So basically, it's in chunks. It's, it's a bunch of chunks. How are you guys doing, by the way? How is the chat going? Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna switch, switch to this. This, this is, is my table. table. It's a bit messy. I'm just gonna move my mouse pad away from for now. Just get some more space here. There we go. I think it's all right. Oh, okay. It will be, be my birthday soon. soon. Congratulations. What are you getting? Some, st some Lego, I believe. Okay, so last time we finished that little platform with lava. Happy early birthday, that's right. Happy early birthday. Um, let's see, we gotta watch this video. Okay. Oh, echo, yes, thank you. Let me just kill that echo, because that's the second camera. Boom. Yeah, uh, uh, that's what I noticed last time. So, echo should be done. Let me see if there is an echo in other shots, because I did not mute my other camera. This is muted. This is muted. Okay, so only one microphone should be going through, because the other camera has onboard microphone. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, we had this last time. I didn't notice after that power outage. Uh, my, my audio settings got reset, basically, and it was really echoey, because this camera was capturing audio as well. It's not supposed to. Only one microphone should be working. Um, yeah, Echo is gone, I think, right now. Thank you. Appreciate Yeah, we, we should have only one microphone feeding the stream. So, it should be good now. Okay, thank you guys for noticing. Always striving for that quality so you can enjoy, you know, you spend your time with me. You can just um, have the pl most pleasant experience I can provide, I hope. I hope that's the case. Thank you. Yeah, I noticed that last time only after I finished, because I, I just checked my stream if the quality was good after, and I said uh, after we had that power outage, my computer died uh, for a second. Um, and it just reset all the audio settings, so that was the case. Yeah, thank you guys. How are you guys doing, by the way? How was your weekend? How was everything? How was the week? I posted some videos during the week, not much. I did the um, Old Trafford review, that set was sitting on the shelf for the longest time and I figured like, why not just talk about it for a second. I have uh, so many sets in the backlog that I want to talk about, um, one at a time. 
one at a time. Okay, so that's basically that platform showing me how it works. Not a biggie. Okay, this is bug number five, I believe. Is the same as this one? Yeah, it's the ghostly thing. Okay. Okie dokie. Yeah, all good. Yeah, bug five, please. Yes. So again, for those who are tuning in, uh, Super Mario does not have paper instructions whatsoever. Everything is digital because you needed the app to kind of play it. I mean, not really because the Mar Mario fig uh, himself actually records all your movements when you start a level. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you guys, you have to start with like a, a starting pipe and then there's the ending um, flag which uh, finishes your course and that the figure uh, basically captures all the coins in between. The app is for tracking your levels. So you can see how many coins you captured so far in all the levels. You can capture your best times and things like that. So the app is kind of integrated, but I think it's not really necessary to have fun with it, honestly. Yeah. Hey Ben, welcome. Good to see you as well. Familiar faces joining in. Awesome. Thank you guys. I think we got five bucks to go to this castle. It's a somebody's texting me. It's a thousand and ten pieces set, so not that small. I think it's the biggest in the wave actually. Yeah. Hey, Cafe Con Lego, welcome to the stream. Long time no see. Thank you so much for joining. Kind of an impromptu Saturday stream from me. Uh, usually I don't do this. Uh, it was on a short notice, I know. So thank you for joining. I know people. Um, probably just got their notifications. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing well as well. It's a, it's a good weekend. Had a good week. Pretty productive. Pretty awesome. You know, I mean, this week was good for me, but I don't think it's, it was the best week overall. I know. I mean, um, Mr. Bossman passed away, the, the actor for the Black Panther. Uh, role model, if I may. I did not share anything about this, I was just griefing myself, but... It's... Uh, I don't know what to, how to feel about it, man. I don't want to, like, make it a sad stream or something, but it really touched me. I, I think Black Panther was one of those movies that really stood out. Um, in all the Marvel Universe. It was just like a, such a surprise of a movie and a fantastic depiction of a black character, you know? And superhero, and, and uh, as an actor, he he was really a role model. He was doing so many good things and just passed away at 43 from colon cancer. So, uh, Wakanda forever. That's all I can say. I, I'm, I, I don't know what to think about it. Hey, Brian, uh, I'm gonna join you right, uh, right, hold on, I'm just gonna join myself. Um, I gotta check my settings. Video. Input device, uh, Kamlik 4K. Output device, speakers. Okay, I think my kids are on the balcony, so they might be here. Um, okay, just adjusting my settings for the live. Yeah. That was a shock, I know. Alright, I'm gonna join you guys. I'm just gonna lower the music so it doesn't overwhelm the stream. Always like mixing live is kind of weird. Okay, I'm just gonna get this a bit higher. Okay, I think that should not be overwhelming. Can you guys hear me? Yep, I can. Awesome. Hello. Um, I think you're on the stream now, so welcome. We have Callum and we have Brian uh, in Discord right now. Yep, Hello. I'm here. Awesome. Just gonna make it a bit more. Okay. Okay, you guys should be good. I I, I think you should be uh, well, well received. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thanks for joining, for hanging out today on Saturday stream, kind of like an impromptu. Welcome, Aethers is live, welcome. Capricorn Lego, welcome <laughs> again. 
Uh, Brixish is here <laughs> as well. Awesome. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing, Brian and Colum? I'm good, thank you. Oh, you know, just chilling. <laughs> Uh, hey Brian, are you are you working on that thing? It, did it arrive? Nope, not yet. Nope, <laughs> that's uh, that is a how long is that? Three months away? Yeah. What? No. I I I'll, I'll talk to you. What? We'll we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. You know the big thing. Well, that, uh... Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> however, yeah, yeah. however, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am uh, working on a video for the Harry Potter minifigures in which I need to feel out some more for uh, oh, okay. someone special out there, you know? Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um... It, did you know that the uh, minifigures in the box, the distribution, is entirely random this time around? I heard that. I just talked about it on today's uh, news stream on Beyond the Brick. Um, so I think first Bricks had mentioned that they um, that there is a box distribution and they, they they broke it down in one single article. But at some point they said like the the Goblin from Green God's Bank is like seven per box. I was like, what? How is that possible? What? Um, and then I checked out the BrickFans article and BrickFans said like there are multiple YouTubers or people who got their boxes of minifigs and they have like five Rons or like six Hermione's, you know, and it's, it's just random. It, you don't, you, you're not even guaranteed to have more than one collection per box. Well, that's unfortunate. I know. Uh, so I, I think they just changed everything about the minifigures. I mean, how, how I they, how they, they distribute for, them. Yeah. I don't know why they would do it for just this wave. It's kind of odd, but you know, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Hmm. Welcome, Steve Gamer. Welcome. Um... Oh, Brixish is here too. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying Thank to you. be a pro streamer and trying to mute my Discord as I speak to the stream. Uh, I, I know like people are doing that. Uh, it's like, Brian, you're on Twitch mm -hmm. more. Like, does that is that how it works when you like have people on Discord? Do you just mute yourself and talk to the stream or? Well, typically that happens when a streamer is reading off their donations on the stream. So, I mean, if somebody wants to donate any amount through Super Chat to support the stream, then Mike can really exude his pro streamer skills, <laughs> mute us in Discord, and then address whoever sent in a donation. But that that's just an option. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's fun. Uh, did you guys watch the uh, Doc Disrespect streams lately? A Doc streams? Oh, yeah. Dude, I've been no. watching like too much of them lately. It's so fun. <laughs> Nice. Oh, he, uh, he's on YouTube right now, so it's not even. Uh, you don't have to go to Twitch. I mean, he's <laughs> banned from Twitch, so that's kind of. But yeah, his streams are like hilarious. He's been he's been playing the Fall, Fall Guys tournament. Actually, I'm playing Fall Guys, as of per two days. It's kind of fun game. But Doc was playing uh, Fall Guys, and the way he was trying to win, and he had like few clutch situations when he was like the last one, and just got. Absolutely decimated in the last second. Funniest thing ever. So how are you feeling about the build here so far? Uh, dude, uh, I think I'm starting that big Bowser's Castle mechanism. Um, sort of. No, dude, like, I, I think I talked about it in the beginning of the stream that my kids enjoy the heck out of Mario. Like, it just Excellent. proves the concept. Uh, I don't know, I just showed it to them how it works, how you can jump and like collect coins. And I, I swear, I think after that stream, the next day, they were like sitting with just the starter codes for like four hours. That's awesome. Which is awesome for a parent who works from home, honestly. <laughs> mm. so that was something for sure. No, I like the build. Mm. I, I like how it works. I like the responsiveness of the figure. I, I think it's, it's just fantastic so far. I'm gonna probably hunting down those uh, character packs at some point to get more like adversaries for Mario. Nice. 
Uh, Rafi is asking, have anyone seen the Lego Baby Yoda? Yeah, I even talked about it today morning in Beyond the Brick stream. Like, everybody reports on that right now. Mm. It's they, People found Baby Yoda in, in uh, stores in Luxembourg. Mm. Yeah, I saw that and I was very... I was just... So I messaged you just out of, like... Oh, because especially with Mandalorian, Disney and Star Wars is yeah, all I know. very, very, like, crack the hammer down. You never yeah, know what dude, they're like, going to do. I'm, I know... I'm super careful on leaks, um, but yeah. the, no, the I, idea I, is... I believe you too. Yeah. I just wanted to message you out of my own, like, yeah. concern, you know? It wasn't because I, was I didn't too. trust you, you know? Yeah, but, like, the, the thing is that uh, I think Beyond the Brick accepts any news that are reported on other websites affiliated with sure. uh, LEGO Ambassador Network, and Brickset is part of it. Um, and funny, because Brickset was posting those pictures, and the last picture was saying something about, oh, uh, if anything uh, happens with the LEGO team, here's a picture showing it's actually LEGO store selling it, or like LEGO section in an official retailer selling it. <laughs> and they just said like, that's in case LEGO, LEGO legal gets involved. <laughs> it was like, oh, you have to actually say that in the article? It's kind of crazy. Hmm. But in, in, all, in all fairness, I think as long uh, the, the, as long as a set lands on, on like official you know store shelves, it's it's a free reign. You can report on that, like in my opinion. Yeah, that seems to be the policy. I just you know, I I, I get. Yeah, it. I know Brian, because I'm I'm you know I, I've been growing on YouTube uh, in the times when Lego was super strict about showing things. Um, you know, we avoided a lot of trouble back in Brick Vault just by not reporting things everybody reported on because we were like scared we would get like notified or something. Right. Um, but ever since I gotta tell you that LEGO, I think, is understanding their own mistakes, you know, like early distribution or things like that. And I think they understood it over time. And now it's, you know, as long as something it's not like a stolen picture from a warehouse or something, um, I think it's a fair game. This was the case, you know, of clear uh, sales of a set in a country that everybody could see it um, and I think the same happened a few weeks ago with the Lego City uh, the new square set City Square set I think from Lego City also was right. like located in some Legoland or something and also Lego was like it was before the official announcement and still nobody got in trouble for that so I think they're kind of like easing out even without any um, looking into if that's Star Wars or not Star Wars I think Disney also is kind of like easing down on that. I don't know. I think that seems to be the case because it's 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 kind of harder to get in trouble right now, I think. Uh, this is just awesome Super Mario set. Hey, Milka Zukalva, yes. The Bowser's Castle is, I think, the biggest set. Uh, Steve Gamer. Hey Mike, did you see Ashen Flash's Lego Ideas submission for Fall Guys? Yes, I saw that. I don't think I supported that yet, but I should. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and Ashen Flash made Lego Fall Guys, and also my favorite Twitch streamer Lego uh, Brick and Nick is also making Fall Guys, and I, I like I think I like his better. But Ashen Flash did like a full course, like a, like a map. So they they kind of like again, Brian? appeal. Um, oh, you know. I'm, uh, I'm doing you know, good. I'm just feeling out these uh, many audiences. figures, chilling. I uh, I was just gonna say hi for a few minutes here, but uh, <laughs> you know, just another day. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm good. I just want to tell you, um, it, it's half past eleven in the evening where I live. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is. Are you guys chilling over some Lego sets right now, or just? Just, just what are you chatting? Brian is always building something. He's probably just quiet. No, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm filling out these figures, and then I have to edit a video, and then probably I actually just put up a shelf full of uh, sets that's gonna be a part of the background for the Beyond the Brick video. So I gotta nice. finish decorating that. Awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool. Like, I, I, I really want to hear what you what you think about those figs. Oh, wait, uh, me about what? Oh no, I really want to hear your opinion about those minifigures. Oh, on the Harry Potter? Yeah. Oh, um, 
Yeah, so a lot of them are okay. Uh, a lot of them have good elements to them, but they could have, like, the, the outfits themselves aren't exciting. So, uh, uh -huh. Hermione, Ron, uh, Harry, Neville, like, a lot of them are kind of uninspired in terms of, you know, what is unique to them in terms of outfits. So, like, you could use them for other figures and they're cool, uh -huh. but I'm glad we get Moaning Myrtle. I'm glad we get a Phoenix with Dumbledore. We get an actual molded sword of Gryffindor, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of cool pieces like that, like Luna Lovegood's uh, uh, lion helm thing, that hoodie. That's yeah, pretty I cool. Like that there's one. like a lot. There's a lot of cool elements with it, but there's only a couple of standout figures that I really like. Um, but my favorite, my favorite is Moaning Myrtle out of all of them because it's such a unique figure for all, the rest of this entire line, and it's all blue. The the hair piece is like this rubbery like blueberry color it's very cool uh -huh. looking um really like luna lovegood's uh you know the, the lion helm and the phoenix so those three would probably yeah be the my phoenix is a new mold for, as well uh, right it's a new mold yes uh which i really wanted that to be in the great hall when it came out a couple of years ago it should have been a custom molded phoenix instead of being the brick built one that we actually did get but yeah. luckily now we have one that's you know how it should have been from the get-go Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that one for sure. Man, I, I can't uh, can't wait to see the Dragon Alley. Honestly, like it's. I think they're announcing it uh, on the 31st. Mm. I mean, I, I I've seen you know it's kind of been leaked, but I want to see like the high res everything and you know. Sure. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, welcome Stanley, how are you doing? Uh, building Mario, yes sir, I'm building Mario. Um, I'm fine. Um, did I, I see the Lego Star Wars so trailer? Really Harry Potter. Um, I was the same as you really. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna mute Discord from uh, like here, here uh, like randomly so I can read the chat. Um, yeah, uh, the trailer is awesome. We can actually maybe, I'm not sure if you can watch on the stream, I kind of wanna, but I'll think about it. I don't know if that's like copyrighted or not. The new sort of the Gryffindor piece is miles ahead. Yeah. Samey, but you know, they're good for customization too. So I guess there's that, but yeah, we're getting to the point now with all of the different minifigures in the line that, you know, there's bound to be ones that the costumes aren't necessarily as interesting, but they're still you know, adding to the overall value of the Harry Potter line. Like, I, I think they're all additions that are meant to be in there and they're cool, but they're not all super duper exciting individually. But if you love Harry Potter, you're going to get all of them and it's going to be great regardless. Yeah, I think yeah. Every, every wave is sort of like exciting here, but not exciting there, you know, it's, it's kind of like a hit or miss. But this one is, I think, strong overall. I, I think it's strong overall as well, but it's just, just the... With series one, back in 2018, which has strong me figures in general, which I think for me, series two is is, is probably the weakest Harry Potter, Harry Potter series in general. For me, at least. It's like the, the, the you think it's like the worst quality in series two? No, that's what I meant. Um, it's a, it's not a worst series out there, but like like Brian said. Um, I mean, I mean, sure. Um, what I mean is, is that, um, there's not enough um, interesting outfits for the for the, for the, for the characters, individual characters. Sure, sure to go for cu customs, but for me, for me, um, we don't do customs. What I should do really? Um, that just what's the word I'm looking for? Not so rude or anything, but it's just. You know I me mean, that, do you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, t t I guess to each their own, like, there are probably as many opinions as there are minifigures. So it's of course, um, you know, for any anyone, uh, everybody will feel different about those minifigs, for sure. Exactly, yeah. And why I say that is the fact that the Series 1 had 22 minifigures, but most because of our six, um, for, for, for the Beast characters, but well, this one has just only 16. But the thing is, the price tag 
price tag. You buy had worse, right? With the um five dollar price tag as well, right? Uh yes, yes, they are like four ninety nine. Uh, the the price has risen some time ago. It's 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 staying that way. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, in the UK, for me at least, they're like three pounds forty nine for a mm -hmm. pack. Oh boy, I think Wait, we're I... building the Bowser, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wait, you're building Bowser now? Um, I mean, sorry, not the Bowser fig, but the, the, his, his oh, house the in castle. the castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the castle, nice, alright. Yeah, I, right. yeah, I want to finish this, like, let's see how it actually looks like as the flagship set of, of that wave, sort of. So Mike, what do you got going on for the rest of the weekend other than other than the stream? Um just work, you know, the usual stuff. Pretty much. I mean, you know, during the pandemic. Just wondering why my viewer account doesn't work like it's supposed to. Anyhow. Um just the usual stuff. Lately I've been trying to just like I don't know, balance work from home and not get too crazy about it. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it's it's kind of like some days are like, oh, it's cool, like I got everything under control, but other days are just like, you know, kids are doing yeah, this, exactly. kids are doing that, and I just don't feel like being productive at all, so I feel like yeah. I could be doing so much more. I, I mean, I keep doing my work probably a slightly slower pace than I would in the office, but I feel like I can do so much more for this channel, and like, I just sometimes I don't feel like to, so it's kind of like... Like a seesaw of emotions, I don't know. I guess I'm just getting tired of it. I think that's where everybody is at too, unfortunately. It's just droning yeah. on and on far longer than any of us want to at this point. Yeah, it's, it's just like, I'm, no, I, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, I have a secure income and I have a job and it works out. And I, I can't complain, honestly, like things are okay. But you know, those limitations you have, um, just like the, the, that anxiety when going out, uh, even to take groceries and stuff, you know, I don't know, it just feels, the longer it drags, it feels worse. Mm. So I don't feel like as creative, as, as productive as I used to be. Probably I, I need some sort of like a, like a getaway to, to get my mind on the right spot, but I don't know, that's, that's what I've been feeling. It's like... Is this like, you're feeling okay and th things are okay, nothing is like a dumpster fire, you know? But in the back of your head you feel like, mm, I don't know what to feel about this, right? Yeah, right, exactly. I, I'm yeah, in yeah. the same exact boat. So yeah, I'm grateful that things are okay, but I'm not like super happy about all of it. Mm. Yeah. Which is nice to stream sometimes, because like streaming kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know, moves the mind away from it, I guess. Yeah. Totally, yeah. How have your kids been dealing with it? Good. I mean, kids are really good. Um, honestly, I have both kids at home right now. We decided to pull back from the daycare. Because, um, I mean, we had a small daycare, but for now, I, I think just gonna just do more like a work from home dad fully. Um, which I'm able to so far. So, you know, saving some money here and there, it's okay that way. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, kids, kids, kids are actually handling this very, very well. I think it's just... Um, they're just less anxious than, than I am. You know, kids are just usually less anxious. Um, you know, they have everything they need. They hang out at home. School is starting actually remotely next week. So it's gonna be a bit of a kind of excitement. Uh, schools in San Diego are starting fully remotely. There is no in 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 person classes for the next few months. So everything is remote, which I'm actually happy about because I was freaking out about not having my kiddo go to school or having to go to school. Right. So yeah. Uh, I guess California is just not listening to the federal guidelines of open everything, and they just like nope. Just gonna keep it safe here, sorry guys. 
So that's good. I like California for that standing up to the, you know, the general agenda of, of those guys upper up. Cafe Con Lego says, uh, I'm getting drained. I'm, I like working from home, but it's starting to get me that I work and play at the same space. It's like story of my life. I think we talked about it last time that um, I trying my best to divide between three things. Uh, life as family life, as just like everyday family things. Uh, work, which is my salaried job and hobby, which is the cool factor. Uh, and dividing those three things while being all in the same place is kind of tough. Um, that's why I'm so happy that I have my editing computer in an entirely different place in my apartment and this studio only serves this only one purpose of sitting here and building stuff and recording videos. And that, that helps immensely. Like just with the mindset, with your general um, feeling of, of, of just, you know, division between life and work, kinda. How are you guys coping with that? Like Brian, are you are because you, you you work you know everything you do from your home, right? So yeah, you 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 try to divide the way you you film, you edit. Like how do you cope with that, or do you just do everything in one space? Uh yeah, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I have a office space that I rent out instead of being moved out on my own right now. So that's kind of my setup. So oh, so you have I an have, office space? I that's kind of awesome. Yeah, uh, it's a lot cheaper than living independently. I'll tell you that. And it's it's good in the sense that I have a dedicated space to do all of my stuff, but then I also have the same space to play, which it's different for me because I play a lot of video games as my job. So yeah. in terms of like play, I can play video games, but like that is my job. So what is it that I do for purely enjoyment? Well, it's not build Lego because yeah. I'm normally building something for Beyond the Brick or blah, 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 whatever. Because right now so, you, you are full time on Twitch, right? That's is that full time? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing basically putting in full time hours across, you know, every platform, uploading videos okay. and live streaming and all that. Yeah. So and between everything on Beyond the Brick as well and also trying to keep my own sanity with everything. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's all adding up, you know, so. Um, but yeah, but you, you have this that's... like freedom to like structure your day around all the things you have to do So you control everything, right? I do and part of me Like I a part of me wants someone to kind of keep me in line But I also love having the freedom of being able to do what I want to do. Yeah um, a, a lot of it comes down to like the energy that I have for mm -hmm. certain things So if I'm not feeling up to recording a video in that moment then i may not record and then yeah you know i gotta make sure i get a good night's sleep and discipline myself and whatever it doesn't mm. necessarily uh happen instantaneously but you know i uh i make the best of what i can i guess yeah i think that's my biggest struggle um because i want to you know dedicate more time to it but i feel sometimes so exhausted uh when i finish my my work day like nine to five you know and then it's like 5 p.m. and then I have to think what to do with the rest of the day, which is like shoot a video, catch up with some other projects, spend time with the family. I think that's my biggest struggle. So I kind of envy you that you have control over it, but I know it's also, you know, I'm not saying like it's easy. I know how hard it is to keep yourself in check um, and, you know, keep making content where you feel like you have the right to like take a break here and there, right? Right. But you, you gotta be also very um, reasonable about this. You can say like every time to like do this thing tomorrow, right? So right. yeah, I, I feel the struggle here, but I, I feel like I, I kind of, I wish I had more control over my time, but like just having a salary job, work from home, it's, it's you know, it's, it's just what it is pretty well, much. Also keep in mind that, you know, I'm a single guy with no girlfriend or kids. So it's like, I have a lot more freedom to like dictate my day and and all that but that's just you know yeah what it what it kind of comes down to and I, yeah for now at least i'm able to do whatever i want but who knows when that'll change you know i gotta admit i did have a time in my life when i kind of complained of i'm not it was like subconscious when i complained of having you know responsibilities 
<laughs> I chose yeah. this life, you know, I, I got married and everything. And, and I had a few moments when I caught myself saying like, oh, I wish I had more time to work when I have to like spend time with kids. Like this is the worst probably feeling ever when you complain about the life you chose. And I, I love this life. I mean, I love my kids and everything, but sometimes just catch, catch yourself saying like, oh, I wish I could do more on this, but I can't because I have to do this and that. Um, so I kind of learned how to live with that and appreciate what, what, what things are, how things are. And if I can do like two videos a week, I'm happy with that. But at least I can keep everything else going, right? So right. yeah, it's like I think I think to each each to their own in in that way. So, like there are struggles. Probably if I if I went like if I dropped everything, I went full time, you know, uh, YouTube. Probably I would like few things about it, but regret a lot of other things, you know. I don't know. Probably it's, it's just the way you you look at things. Uh, what's like the hardest for you? when it comes to being your own boss? What is the hardest part of it? The hardest part in terms of that and my current position in general is I am always alone in this office. I hate it. I despise it. I, I wish I had know. other people here. I wish I had uh, literally anyone like here to like, I, when, when somebody else is here, like one of my friends will come over occasionally and like just sit and like watch TV or something, but I instantaneously feel more productive when there's other people here it's always so like that just, right <laughs> yeah yeah it, it just it works so if there was somebody else not even working on video stuff but just working on whatever like i just feel yeah. like oh i need to be more productive and keep up with them and kind of do that for each other so that that's the biggest thing for me you know what i'm gonna agree with that one because like with the cool factor it's me uh my wife helps um you know, on the side, just by allowing me to work when she takes over the kids. So she's kind of part of it, too. Um, but when it comes to production and everything, that's all me. And sometimes I feel like I could be more productive if somebody kept me in check. I think that's what I like about working for BrickVault. It's because like the office was only most, most of them like two or three of us. But we knew what everybody worked on and just like it was kind of like subconscious race to finish projects, right? So. We knew we were working towards a greater goal of like keeping the channel going and successful. Um, and I think that was very motivating. Something I'm, I'm kind of miss working on my own, that there is, there is, I don't have any partner or anybody who's also into editing or production that would just, you know, work on something on their own for my channel and I would work on something for the channel as well at the same time. And I think that's also, that's why people like team up and have like their editors or something because working more than one person working on the same thing, it's always makes, uh, it's like a mutual motivation, I think. Right, exactly. Uh, I, I miss that a lot, but I, I'm not, I'm in no position to like hire an editor or anybody to help me out. It's just me and me, you know? So maybe in the future, but I, I, I see your point quite clearly. Yeah, I, I have some people help me by people. I mean, my friend Joe, he helps me occasionally with like making thumbnails, but it's not something that he can do full time. You can't make YouTube thumbnails full time for like two videos a day. So mm -hmm. like, you know, there's only so much he can do and he might as well do it from home. So, you know, why show up, lug the computer here and all that. So yeah. it's, it, it's unfortunate, but you know, right now at least it's going to be what it's going to be. And until I can, I could hire an editor. I'm in you know, same position as you pretty much. Yeah. Um, somebody was asking in the chat. Um, oh, Ben, uh, do you do I like digital instructions? I was a little annoyed with the loading times for the two, three step sub assemblies. Actually, I like it. I'm using them. This is the f actually this is the first time I'm fully engaged in the digital building with Lego. You know, I I built some mocks back in the brick vault days when I was using LDD or Stud Stud IO for sure. But you know, the experience was like far less appealing because you would have to like. You know, if for those of you who know LDD um, models, sometimes they are like terrible to navigate through. And, you know, sometimes the instructions made it with them are terrible. This is a different level because uh, I, I'm using just a Motorola phone. It's not the most powerful phone, but the app works well. The rotation works well. I don't see any delays, honestly. And I'm building probably the biggest chunk of this set right now. And it navigates me. I, I dare to say it's easier than instructions with paper because it le takes less space on my table, just the phone, basically. Um, it's super responsive. I can check all the angles if I want to. So I gotta say for the first time doing this with actual official LEGO set, I do enjoy the building experience with the screen and surprisingly well made, honestly. 
so yeah that's my that's my take right now was my microphone of gain too high was i getting blown out there for a second at the beginning yeah my bad. Yeah, I was. No, uh, no worries. I think you sound good. I'm lowering it now. I hope maybe that's a little bit better. This uh, mini figure video I'm doing. Uh, I'm I'm adding a a little bit of a spin to it. So, nice. did did you see the uh, the Mario ASMR video I did? I did. I think this one's blowing up kind of right now. Like it has three hundred thousand views. <laughs> you hit the nail right there, dude. I don't. I don't know. Who paid for the views on it? But mamma mia! No, dude, it algorithm. Like, off. I, I, the, I remember like this conversation with John uh, or Joshua. I don't remember uh, a few weeks ago because we were like poking the idea of doing something ASMR with another project with another set. I was like, I think he wanted me to do ASMR. Uh, maybe it was actually the minifigures too, like open, maybe something, something. But we initially thought about it, so like, nah, maybe not. And, and and I did like a normal video. And I think they followed through with you on that idea and it just actually blew out. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. No, dude, I, uh, the, the I... algorithm can be crazy sometimes. Like I keep getting back to that video I made about this like bass guitars uh, randomly. And for a few weeks, it just got so like, picked up by a wave of algorithm or something that mm. it, it got me like 200,000 views in like a few weeks. And now Great. this video is just like back to its normal levels, but it's still getting me like a thousand views every like few days. Hey, that's still good. There you go. So you never know. Like I still don't get it how it blew up. I, I did not promote it. I did not do anything with it. But someday it was just like the, 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 the graph for views was like Phew! just skyrocketed like one day. Yeah, right. It was super weird. I, uh, I ended up picking out that set, so uh, I felt out all the bags and it's uh, ready to go. So I'm going to you know, pass it on to one lucky fellow out there. And uh, I'm going to be uh, wrapping up this video over here. So yeah, I'm going to cool, dip out of here, do that. Awesome. Oh, well, some do you. Uh, I'll be lurking in the background with you. Sure. Uh, turn turn on a little bit as I do my thing, but I'll uh, I'll talk to you guys yeah, soon, all right? Yeah, you can mute yourself okay. or just like hang out in the. Yeah, I'm gonna be here for the next hour probably. Cool. Sounds good. Everybody in the chat, have a good night. Talk to you. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Callum, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. At. Hold on. How's the chat doing? Hey, Owen, welcome to the stream. How are you doing, man? Long time no see. I know, I, I've, I, mean, I don't stream at Saturdays quite often. Mike, I'm Nerve, uh, Brick Star Wars boy. Could I join Discord with you guys? This is, would be my first time, I would be an honor. Uh, yeah, are you in my Discord, Brick Star Wars boy? Let me just um, get you an... We can send an invite to the chat, so... I send those invites uh, occasionally on the streams. So let me just copy that in the chat. Hilly Bitty Banjo Kid, welcome! This is my Discord, guys, so uh, that's for you guys, viewers of the Cool Factor. Usually I don't post this link anywhere else on, on live stream, so... Uh, Brick Star Wars boy, if you want to join, you got your mic ready, you can hang out and uh, come join me and Callum right now in the live stream. We're just chatting and chilling out. Back on your day shift? Awesome. So that means you're back to work? Uh, you're not working from home anymore? Oh wait, I think you worked through the pandemic, right? Okay, we are going to box 7. Um, so Brick Star Wars boy, just so you know how it works, you gotta join the Discord and then you join the live stream waiting room and then I can move you to the actual... Oh yeah, oh, and because you were working through, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I confused with somebody else. Uh, 
Are you happy getting back to your normal day shift? I'm still working from home. Uh, it's kind of... Yeah, we talked about it for a second there, but yeah, I've been working for from home for... Whew, I think since March. It's been... I, I, I keep losing track of time. It's been a long time. Mm. <laughs> How about you, Callum? Are you are you working from home or are you? Uh, not no. I wait. Just, I can't. Um, sorry, I, I I don't know. I mean, um, I'm going out. I'm going out to town every now mm -hmm. and then. But but I work my but 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 I work my. You should turn your home, so. Alright. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Star Wars Boys, I see you. Legonard, okay, you're getting into the live right now. Boom. Uh, can you hear us? Hello. Oh, there you go. How are you doing? Yeah. Doing good. Can you hear me? Yeah, just fine. All good? Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. You're probably like the most frequent viewer of my videos, honestly. <laughs> Hang on, I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? We, we can hear you just okay. fine. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay. Just check your Discord settings, but we can hear you just fine, yeah. Okay, I'm good. Awesome. How you doing? Doing good. So you say you say your first time being on Discord on a live stream? <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. Well, welcome. Welcome. But you're always in the comment section of my videos. I appreciate that. You're like everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Uh, Zebrix is asking, when will you finish? Uh, I don't know. I think I'll I have a good pace. Probably I'm going to stream for maybe an, an hour or so more. I just want to finish this uh, castle today. Just see how it looks. Uh, I kind of want to maybe work on a review for tomorrow or for Monday. I don't know. I, I, I'm really... Um, chilling with my pace right now, so I'm trying to work on this on the channel content some here and there on the weekends, but also take my time to actually um, take a rest on the weekend because I do work five days a week um, on a computer, five like seven to eight hours a day. So <laughs> weekends are the only time I can actually just do something about my Lego and everything. Hey, Brickway is is in the chat as well. How are you doing, Matt? Matt, you wanna join Discord or are you busy? Yeah, Matt the Brickwiz is in the chat. Nice. How you, how you Matt doing was today, Mike? Matt, I'm doing fine, thank you. Um it's a good weekend. That's why I felt like streaming today, yeah. Brickwiz, I just gotta say Brickwiz was killing it with the content lately. Dude, like you're posting so many videos, I'm envious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> He's like posting and posting. I, I, I like his new um, kind of like a background setup um, that he has. Kind of sweet. Mike, I did a private DM you on uh, Discord. I don't know if you got it. Um, sometimes Discord doesn't show me DMs for some reason. I got a... I don't have it actually. No, I don't have any message from you. I'm not sure why. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know, like, uh, I don't have any, like, settings in place, but Discord sometimes filters messages. I don't know why. Um, no, I don't have anything. I look up to you. You're my inspiration, Mike. You're, uh, um, I loved your vlogs in Brick Vault. Oh, thank you, dude. Welcome, my pleasure. <laughs> it's so, yeah. so nice to hear. Like, you're, I gotta say you're a very active member of uh, community in general because I see you on my videos a lot of course like we've been, we've been you know kind of like you've been uh, watching our content like our I would say Brick Vault and my content uh, for years and I see you yeah. like everywhere on every everybody else video so it's pretty awesome that you can support so many channels just by watching Thank the you. content and commenting it's really nice to have a, a fun like this I appreciate it if the, uh, the chat has any questions uh, I'll be glad to answer them <laughs> yeah go for it um <laughs> oh wait wait oh no worries um how do i
Oh, go ahead and have a have your dinner. Yeah, bon appetit. Good. I mean, Matt, it's it's really showing that you're trying. Like, I wish I was able to put as many hours as you do in the videos. Like, holy smokes! Like, the congrats on on really be pushing the content like next level. I I I, I will support you. Like, dude, like just keep going. So fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I got a Polish viewer, I'm just gonna welcome him in Polish. Cześć, pierwsza w nocy. Ja oglądam klocki, za 4 godziny muszę wstać. He's saying, uh, witam, uh, tak w ogóle. Uh, it's a Polish viewer, he's saying hi, it's like 1 am in Poland. And he, he has to wake up in 4 hours and he's still watching a Lego stream, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been there, like, I, I, I won't even admit how many times I watch late night streams, because sometimes I work on, on things like on my computer until like 1 a.m. 2 a.m. and so many times I'm hanging out in like Twitch streams late night or something. It's kind of common for me. I'm back. Welcome back. Sorry about that. That was a call. Hey, no that was my dad. No my dad so. Um, sorry, that's my dog. Oh, you got a dog? <laughs> oh, he's so. Uh, that, that's a cute bark. I know she's she's um, a Chihuahua mixed with a terrier. That's what I wanted to say. Like that's like a like like, like a chaff bark, like like a very soft bark. And Chihuahuas can be very loud too. Like they're small but they're loud. Oh yes, yeah. they are. <laughs> Funny. Um, I have a question for both of you guys. Um, What's up? What's your uh, thoughts on the uh, collectible minifigs in general? In general. And your favorite. Um, well, I, I, I mean, first of all, I think like just Lego making those figs is one of the best moves they ever made. Yeah. Uh, ever since they started, um, it's just something I'm always looking forward to, and many people do as well. Uh, I don't want to call my favorites because honestly, I've been introduced to the minifigures like, you know, just a few waves ago. A lot of them were happening in my dark ages, so I don't really have. Uh, favorite across the board, honestly. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's for me. Um, I've only been collecting a couple of movie series ever since, ever since the Lego Man movie came out. So, about three years ago now. Okay. Okay. Uh, for me, for me, um... Then, uh, collectible minifix, I, <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, wants, he just wants attention. That's what he wants. I know, she just... He likes to bark at everything, even the mailman and stuff, so... <laughs> okay, back to my, uh, what I was saying. Um, my favorite and um, the one I got into that started the collectible mini thing for me was uh, the Lego Batman 1, I think it was. Mm -hmm. one. I like this one too, yeah. yeah. And then, um, I just started collecting them ever since. They, they can get tricky sometimes by uh, feeling the pieces, but, you know, like more to know which character you want to get, so. Uh, Zebrix, I will check yeah. the Instagram for sure, yeah. <laughs> But I think I know what you're talking about, and it's all good, actually. I've been um, able to check that on, I have the, uh, on my side, um, so it's all good. Yeah. What's your... You guys' favorite um, old theme that retired out of LEGO? Favorite theme that retired? Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know, I'm probably bring up something from, like, Nostalgia 90s, like Ice Planet or something. <laughs> I don't know. Castle or pirates, maybe. You have good choices. Yeah, because yeah. like my my dark ages were so long that I missed, um, I missed most of two thousands. You know, I've been oh. reintroduced to Lego when I started working for Brick Vault. That was like the year I got back to Lego. It was like twenty fifteen. So yeah, anything before that, honestly, like I kept learning about what I missed. 
throughout just working on videos and for Brick World. So anything from like 2000s, 2015, it's it's a blank for me most of the time. Ooh. Yeah. I'm, re I'm reading uh, Rasty's uh, comment. The dog just want wanted a shout out. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to uh, what, what, what's your uh, dog's name? <laughs> Noah. 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 Right. Also, shout out. <laughs> uh, for me, um, Master Fighter. That was a good theme. Master Fine. Fighters. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find the hidden side appealing to you in any way after Monster Fighters? Um, I only got two of the hidden side sets plus the uh, square uh, promo juice. That was a promotion. Okay, yeah, I think yeah, I got this one made a review at some point. That was a fun little. Um, I like the th the theme. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I think it had pretty strong Monster Fighter vibes. Honestly. Getting that too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we I got people off. joining the... Sorry. Uh, just gonna welcome some few people in the chat. Sorry about that. We got uh, ZB. Welcome. Uh, how you doing, man? Uh, did you see the classic Monster Brickheads leak? Frankenstein? I did not see that leak today, no. Somebody mentioned it to me, I think, on the Beyond the Brick stream, but I did not follow up and look it up. I gotta check it out. Um... Awesome, so welcome to the, to the chat, thank you. Okay, uh, sorry, continue. Um, for me, I, I started uh, getting back into LEGO was uh, 2012, was uh, I got back. Okay, so you're not like much uh, longer back than me, honestly. But I, I, I jumped really into it, because you know, it was kind of a coincidence, because uh, I remember when I, I purchased like a LEGO set, I moved to San Diego in 2014, and in 2015, I purchased like a random Lego set for my kid, and that was the first set I built in like 15 years. And then shortly after, I was looking for a part-time job, got hired in the Lego store that was actually being built in San Diego, so I got really into this quickly. Um, and then I met Jack from Brick Vault, and that, everything just spinned in within like three or four months. And I was like, from Dark Ages to like 100% throttle into Lego. That was, that was funny too. To witness like if i look back at if i look back to it it's like whoa <laughs> that really happened like it was like non-lego guy and then four months later a full lego guy that's funny you have a donate mike oh i see that good morning from the philippines mike glad yeah. to be able to join the stream hope you could build diagonally on the live stream I hope so as well, dude. Thank you so much for the Philippine Pesos 150. I appreciate Nathan Briggs continuous support from you. Um, I mean, the Diagon Alley will be announced on the 31st, uh, just a few days from now. I think it's Monday. Um, and then it, I think yeah. it's actually coming out on the 1st. So you should be able to see it on the shelves uh, September 1st. But honestly, like, uh, I can't fit like 400 bucks right now into my budget. It's kind of tough. But definitely this set will be like on my very high up on my bucket list as soon as I can afford it. For sure. Mm. Saw those leaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the leaks were pretty, you know, significant because people not only leaked the uh, the sets, set pictures from some warehouse or something, but they also leaked the actual Lego pictures. Um, so one way. So yeah, it's I've seen it. I mean, obviously I cannot share it yet but um uh, but yeah it's it's worth waiting for i think i did want to mention um before i did get back into uh my dark ages of lego i did ha own uh one of the uh the cr old crusty crap for spongebob mm -hmm. when i was younger and then i had um uh sa sadly i don't own it anymore but i had the uh the first Batman, um, like Bat Boat with Killer Croc. I had it, but I don't, I don't own the figures or the set anymore, sadly. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Man, I when I at some when I visit the, my 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 um, hometown, my my parents' house in Poland, I have so many old sets in the attic. Um, I'm just gonna get a bunch of these and try to find instructions, maybe, and ship them back to the U.S. or something. 
Yeah. That's something I really want to do. Uh, Brick Film joined. Hey, welcome, Brick Film. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much. Uh, hold on, I gotta figure out how this uh, connects. Uh... Oh, this way, okay. Interesting. So, we're doing that like um, Bowser's Bridge of sorts. Okay. I own the, uh, the starter course. I got that. Um, did I get that? I think it was the end of July, I want to say. I got mine in the mail. Nice. I like it a lot. Yeah. I like it too. Like, I, I wasn't. I. I only have Mario because like Lego sent me this care package, so thank you again so much for that. I was not even planning to buy it, because I, I knew like I, it would be interesting for me, but ever since I got it, um, I just I just love the concept and it's just so much uh, fun overall. Yeah. I'm a Mario fan, I just... Um... When I was younger, I played uh, the Mario Kart Double Dash with my si sister. Really right, the only game. game of Mario I played was the original Super Mario on Nintendo NES. Actually, that's why oh. I want the NES system so bad because it, it actually I played on it back in the day. <laughs> it was the first one of the first games I ever played was Mario on Nintendo. And I think when we were when we were um, the other game I think we played when I was younger was um, when we were younger was. Uh, it was the Super Mario World, I think. He had a uh, yellow cape, and it was a Game Boy uh, game. Nice. And then I did get for Christmas last year was uh, Mario Odyssey. Love that game. Yeah, everybody says like the best Mario game to play uh, if you are like not into that genre a lot is Mario Super Mario 64, or or Mario Kart. Is that, is that true? Never... Like Super, Super Mario 64 is like the best Mario game? Uh, that, that's what I heard the most. Yeah, I, I never played it. Yeah, me neither. Like, I just... Honestly, like, after having Lego Mario here in my collection, I kind of want to get back to Mario. I want to, you know, buy a used, like, NES system, like, on eBay or something, and <laughs> just play it again. I don't know. I really want to get that set at some point, of course, too. And when the uh, the Wii U came out, I had um, Super Mario Bros. Wii or Wii U or I don't remember the title of it. It was um, one day back in the day. I'm like, I wish they would make Lego Mario. Yeah, we got uh, questions in the chat. Ooh, Nathan Briggs is saying they got a Hogwarts castle in the mail. Dude, awesome. Are you building it like right away? <laughs> um, just watching one of my favorite streams while working on an epic video for my channel. Hey, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for hanging out and uh, can't wait for your video, dude. Um, I really want to add the most IC set to um, my mock when it comes out. So much money, uh, though, if the rumors are right. I will have to get a job, which is probably not easy. Yeah, the part when you gotta find a, a, a new job right now, it's it's probably tougher in the pandemic, but hey, you got it. Um, am I gonna get the Luke minifigure uh, that drinks blue milk? That's You gotta pre-order the Deluxe Edition of the, the Star Wars game, the Skywalker Saga, I think that's how you get it. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly guys, I gotta be honest with you, I, I'm holding on a lot of purchases right now. I'm, I'm saving just money because I'm gonna be probably moving. Uh, around the end of the year, so I'm trying to save money for my upcoming man cave <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> so I'm, try I'm trying to like just uh, be, uh, you know, vigilant with, with money. So I can actually, um, while I move, I can actually like fix my room and everything. So it's going to be a big thing. I just got a really cool thing actually today because uh, my wedding, uh, my, my uh, marriage anniversary is coming up soon. So my wife got me... We just got back from the store to like a few, a few hours ago and uh, we I found I'm gonna probably show it in a vlog or something but I can tell you I found like those really cool um, Marvel paintings but basically it's a, it's, a, it's a painting in a frame it's like a wooden frame and has a painting of like art deco spider-man iron man hulk and captain america 
and it looks like a painting. It's not a portrait, but it's more like an art deco kind of like face, like front profile in a wooden frame. And it looks so darn cool for a man cave. And I got four of these of each character. Um, I mean, one Spider-Man, one Hulk, one Captain America, one Iron Man, and I'm gonna probably hang them in my, in my, I, maybe here in the studio for now, maybe next week, but also they're gonna be in my man cave, like in, as a main piece on, on the walls. That's kind of cool. So that was my, my wedding anniversary for my wife gift. So there nice. you go. Yeah. Hi. I wouldn't buy it myself, but that was pretty cool. Okay. I think we're to bag number eight. Wait, does the LEGO oh. NES system not actually play games? Yeah. What a failure of us. <laughs> it kind of plays the game, but it's like predetermined. It looks like a Mario game playing, right? Uh, <laughs> welcome, Hannah. Do you guys, are you guys waiting for that most Eisley set? Are you gonna, if, it's, if, if that's true, are you gonna put your eyes on it? I think there are like 11 bugs total in this, so I got like 3 more bugs to go. <laughs> Outsider, welcome to the stream. Um, next month is my birthday, I'm getting the 1966 Bat Cave. Dude, that's awesome, are you able Ooh. to find this set? I, I think he was retired. Yeah, he is retired. Dude, how are you getting this? <laughs> And then again, and again, um, and again, um, in a few weeks' time, um, it's gonna be um, my birthday soon. Congrats, dude! So, what, what, what day is your birthday? It's uh, 14th of September. Nice. Very soon, then. Happy early birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy early birthday, man. Thank you. Yeah, mine's uh, <laughs> December. Mine's in December. Do you have plans for your birthday gift to yourself? Me? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. It depends how much. I'm not sure yet. Um, I promise. I promise to get like a set. Um, I'm not sure yet though. <laughs> yeah, I I never know what I want to get. Like I usually don't get anything myself. I usually like put some money in the savings or something, or just like. Occasionally I would buy something that I wanted for like a long time and yeah. <laughs> but that's about it But most of the time I just try either to save money put it in my savings or something and just um, Put yeah. towards something bigger usually Yeah, that's what I would do as well sometimes. Yeah I Got a question for you guys. What's up? One. Um, what's your guys' favorite Harry Potter movie and um... I can tell you what Thanks. my least favorite is her book. <laughs> I would say my least favorite movie is the Deathly Hallows, say part two. Like the just the fact that they split the the last part into the two. I think the the first one was like, okay, the second one was better, but I think the first one was like very very boring. Yeah, yeah, I'll say the same as well. <laughs> I have never seen the uh, Deathly Hallows part one and two. Yeah, it's, I don't know. For the first one, I remember specifically, I went to the cinema and for some reason I chose the 3D version and it oh, wasn't okay. the best quality 3D and because I was wearing the 3D glasses and I was sitting pretty far from the screen because it was like a packed theater, the <laughs> movie seemed like way too dark. All the dark scenes, I could not see anything what's happening on the screen. It was so bad. Maybe that's because I, I did not like this movie so much because just the I thought it was just too dark uh, when mm. it comes to color palette. Uh, I don't know what it was, but I remember that was a like, pretty uh, abysmal experience in the theater for that movie. I know, oh, okay. like when you wear like three D glasses, they they make the movie darker. But even though I tried to rewatch it on DVD or like Blu Ray after, uh, and it was still like a very dark toned movie. No, <laughs> I didn't like it. It was boring too. Uh, for me, 
uh, movie about movie or book? What do you think? The same. Uh, I think he was asking about the movie and the book. So I'm just gonna say my favorite book. Uh, sorry, my favorite movie was I think Azkaban, and book the same. Same goes for the book Azkaban and the book as well. It's my favorite movie. I really, I really like the uh, time travel, the time turner. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a really. That was really neat. Yeah. So what, what about you, Callum? Um. I have watched it for a long time, before I can remember. I was in the same as you, Mike, for um, the movie. Who's asking around? But I don't know what book. Look, um, I've had the books for a long time. What well, I can remember, I think, I could tell you my least favorite book of the um, Harry Potter series of the books. It will be the Order of Phoenix, because um, I think for me, um, it, the book itself is like really thick. It's way too big for me to read, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I like The Order of the Phoenix too. I think Harry Potter was really strong of a theme uh, when it comes to movies throughout most films, but yeah, it really, like, I think it was bad at the very end. It's just The Deathly Cows was not a successful movie to, for, for my liking. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's mm -hmm. a seesaw here. Hold on guys, I'm just trying to listen to you guys, but I'm also trying to figure out this set, because the more complex yeah. it gets, uh, it's harder to see on that little screen of mine what I'm adding. So it's kind of like... This is where I wish I had the paper instructions, actually. Yeah. Maybe if I use my kid's iPad, that would be better, but still. Hmm. I really enjoyed... Um... In my opinion, I really liked the first two books. They were really uh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, just, just the beginning of Harry Potter when it actually became a, a thing. Uh, I was not into it in the first place, but my friend introduced it, introduced me to the concept of Harry Potter and I was hooked very fast. So I can see the appeal of the first books that came out. They were just like catching people off, off guard and it was like a super fun read overall. Yeah. Um, Mike, who are your guests today? Gabriel, we have, uh, that's Lego Nerd, aka Brick Star Wars Boy. You may know him from being a very avid um, member of the community who shows up in my every video. So he's also a mod. Uh, and also we have, we have Callum, uh, who is also in the chat often. Very much so. Yeah. I used to have this like little plugin to my Discord that would show your names on the screen. I think I gotta reinstall it because it, it's not working. Because it would show your names on the screen, but it's not its not a thing anymore. Mm. But yeah. The Order of the Phoenix goes on for a while. It's a long book. It really is. Um, I think if I can remember, it's like 800 some pages long. Yeah. It was a, one of the bigger stories in Harry Potter, I think. There's a lot of, a lot of what's happening in that book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rafi is saying, I think the Deadly Hallows are great, but each to their own. Are you talking about the book or the, the movie? I, I, I still think the, the books were solid throughout. I don't hate on the books. I'm just, I was talking about the movie being weird to me. It was like stretched out too much. It was dragged on and on with the two uh, parts. And I know it was all building up to the fight with Voldemort. Um, but even though I don't think the climax of this movie was that much of a big deal, like I don't think it delivered that much. Mm. It will either you'll be seeing uh, mutants What's up? Well, either of you uh, be seeing, going to see uh, Mutants, the uh, movie that came out, I think, Friday? No, what's, what's the movie? Seen. What it's is it's called, um, it's called um, the, uh, New Mutants. Yeah, that's it. New Mutants. No, I don't know what it is, honestly. That's one, actually, yeah.
Uh, there's this new movie on Netflix um, with um, Jamie Foxx, uh, Power Project. Um, and Casey Neistat has a role in it, like my favorite YouTuber. Um, <laughs> and I, I did enjoy this one. So sometimes Netflix is really mov doing fun movies. This one's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and Casey has a role in it. Uh, he's like... He plays like a, like a side role, uh, because I think uh, the movie was written and directed by, by his longtime friends, so they gave him a role <laughs> in their big project yeah. with Jamie Foxx, so that's kind of cool. To see your favorite yeah. YouTuber on, on like the big screen. Yeah. Okay, the castle is growing, it's kind of cool so far. Trying to see if I can finish it quite soon. Hey, Colin, are you a, a Marvel or DC guy? I can I like I can tell I'm Marvel, honestly. What about you, Colin? What's the movie? What, what, I'm sorry about it. It's a movie. It's on Lego. Um, Either. Yeah. Either. What's that? Either the movies or the Lego, it does not matter. Um. Oh, I don't actually know, because. I think it says Lego. Um. Like DC in general. But I don't think. I don't know. Really. I mean, I love. I love all Lego themes, you know? Uh, Rafi, yeah, you can join. Yeah, Just go yeah. to Discord and go to the waiting room. I can add you when you're ready. And this Harry Potter. Have you seen the, the, the new mutants? Final That's final. what the guys are talking about. Nick the Lego Brick, welcome to the chat by the way. The um, yeah. I did not see it. Uh, did it, it come out on Netflix on or something? Netflix I gotta check it out, probably. That's a, have welcome to the chat by the way. Thing. So yeah, Rafi, go to Discord, waiting room, and if you're there I can just add you. So, um, guys, I think we might have Rafi joining us in a second. Okay. Just, just letting you know. That's alright. You got some uh, Discord Saturday, if you will. Yeah. Oh, I did not see those. Um, guys, I have a 2x6 tile. Did you guys see them before? 2x6 tile? Yeah. It's a tile. Not, not really, two no. 2x6 tile. I've never seen that's, them before, really, That's no. pretty awesome. i I never seen a 2x6 tile before. No, I've never cool. heard it before. I've never heard it before either. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the highlight of this build so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rafi is in the... Uh, he's in the live, so I'm gonna add him to our chat. Hold on. Okay. Uh, okay, can you hear us? Yo, Rafi. Okay, he's gonna probably get his mic working in a sec. Okay, yeah. Owen? Uh, yeah, I think we might have one more slot. I think I'm... Yeah, five people should be okay for now. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you can hear you. Hey, guys. Hello. Welcome. Hello. How's everyone? everyone doing doing good. good, yeah. We're good, yeah. Owen, uh, yeah, you can join Owen. Owen is also asking to join, so we're gonna have a party today. On thoughts on the um, gameplay trailer for the uh, Skywalker Saga. Yeah, I saw it yep. yesterday and uh, yes, also I... talked about it today at Beyond the Break. Pretty stoked, guys. Are you guys stoked for this one? I'm stoked. Yeah, most definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. I, I can tell. I think now I can tell. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so going to stream that game here on The Cool Factor. I'm going to... I think that's going to be the, play, the first game I'm going to stream, honestly. Nice. It's, I'm so like happy to see where, where they went with all the time they made, they took to, to design this game. It's pretty damn yeah, awesome. Yeah, of course, yeah. Kind of uh, disappointed with the, um, the exclusive figure. I was hoping uh, for uh, maybe a uh, Yaddle or something. A uh, Star Wars character we haven't gotten Lego form before. 
Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Cause we we get Luke in like most sets anyway, so yeah. The exclusive uh, face print with the blue mouth. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's still like a cool print for the face, but yeah, the minifigure itself is not that exciting. Yeah, not, not really. I mean, also. <laughs> Do you guys, do you guys, do you guys, who's pointing to um, get, get a release in next year? Because uh, I'm looking forward, to, I'm looking forward to ever since the E3 announcement, 2019, and and that's gonna be like what, the uh, 2021 Springs gonna be releasing. Do, do you guys want to disappoint you or no? Uh, sorry once again. Um, hey sorry. guys. Hello. Welcome, Owen. By the way, Owen joined too. Welcome. Uh, are you asking um, about the delay of the game? Because yeah, the, the, the game is delayed until next spring. Yeah. Um, do you guys find it's funny? It's funny. Um, kind of disappointing or no? I would say I always appreciate the game companies to take their to take their time to uh, get the game right. You know, you've yeah, seen no. so many premature games uh, lately. Um, just like trying to rush for the fiscal year or something, trying to get it done and just get er, start earning money again, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel it's a good choice if they feel like the game will flop because, you know, of the pandemic or because they have something to still finish. I would always uh, encourage companies to take extra few months to make it right. Uh, a good example would be like uh, CD Projekt Red, who makes their games, like, you know, the way Blizzard used to make games, take their time, done when it's done right when it's done right yeah so if that means the game will be actually very very good at the launch then yes take a few months uh, and, and make sure it's finished I yeah of course say. yeah so i'm not disappointed honestly plus i personally i have a, such a huge backlog of games uh i want to play or i'm playing that i don't mind because i probably i won't even be able to play it in december anyway so, <laughs> so well, i can wait me, that just me i'm currently waiting for Halo Infinite to come out. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna have to have a lot of patience because that one's being delayed, being delayed a bunch of times. So yeah. I think it's quite good when they delay games because you don't want like the people making them in Corona working from home and having to like overwork themselves. So it's quite a good. Sort of I duck in zero seven. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. I'm doing yeah, fine. Everything. Having They're some fun on a Saturday stream. Yeah. Start. Chilling. Uh, yeah. Finishing yeah. the Mario the Castle. We have a few people in Discord, so don't. I hope you don't mind having a, a bunch of uh, brick different Brickfilm has a, a question. Does anyone make brick films here? You mean like stop motion? Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't either. I don't either. I know, I know. <laughs> stop motion is hard. Good stop yeah, motion is. is really hard. Yeah. I used to really watch... What was it? Titan Pictures, I think, was their name. They made the old, like, they made, like, Ninja Turtle stop motion and stuff. With the uh, old uh, Ninja Turtle Lego that came out back then. Hmm. Nice. There is, like, a Polish Lego animator that has excellent quality. I just don't, I can't recall his name right now, but I found out he's a Polish channel, like, after a while, because he's doing stop motion without any, uh, you know, um, voiceover. So I figured out that he's like an English YouTuber, but he was actually Polish. But I can't remember his name right now, but he's really good at this. Nice. Basically, like, we're talking Lego movie quality stop motion. Oh, wow. Wow. But I, I gotta find him, like, at some point, because, like, I used to watch him, but I, I think I, I just forgot his channel's name. <laughs> A Berkstone is saying uh, Fancy Pants? No, no, who? Are... No, that's not the name. The I guy, th the guy has been doing. Uh, I remember he's been doing uh, Jurassic World animations a lot. Flapjack films, maybe that's it. Hold on, Flapjack maybe films. Nothing. Maybe that's this guy. Oh, I just type it to see. I made one in the past. 
the amount of uh, frames I had, I realized I just... No, that, that's not him. That's not Flapjack Films. No, no, no. I'm gonna find him later on, maybe, but there was a different channel name. But his thumbnails and his um, quality of animation was, like, very, very high. The Lego movie wasn't a stop motion. Yeah, I know, but... You know, it, it, it had the concept of stop motion. With a lot of CGI, of course, but... Yeah. A lot of this was actually brick built too, so it's not that big of a lie. Akash Lego Productions? No. It was like a simple name. What if I type Lego Stop Motion on YouTube? What, what shows? I'm even gonna find him like right away. Can't wait for the uh, next phase of the MCU movies. When does that come out? Um, What's the first film of that? Like Black Widow? Is Black Widow the first film of that? I think it is. And then it's The Eternals. Okay. I just can't wait for. Uh, I'm excited for when Marvel does uh, the Fantastic Four and X Men. My, I just, my light I can't just died. wait. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, X Men is getting a reboot, right? Because they kind of like restarting everything. Oh uh, yeah, Marvel has the rights to it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find this guy. You guys, um, I'm gonna go because it's like quarter of one where I am. So, okay, no worries. Hey, calm. Have a good night. Thank you. I'll see you later then. See you later. Yeah, take care, dude. Thanks so, so much for joining. Appreciate it. You're welcome, as always. Uh, I can't find this guy right now. I'm not even gonna find another, but yeah, that's, that's like super good stop motion channel. No, that doesn't ring the bell right now. I think last time I watched his video was probably a year ago or something. The old um, <laughs> Fantastic Four movies were good in my opinion. I, I kind of liked them. Probably cheesy. Yeah, I, I don't like sure. Fantastic Four was trashed a lot, but I'm not sure why. No, none of those. Okay, you can stop guessing. I'm probably gonna fight him later. Uh, one more try. I'm gonna try to find like Lego... Because I think last movie I remember from him was, was Jurassic World. So I shall just type Lego stop motion Jurassic World. I think I did... Um... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, sorry. Is my mic right? Is it like crap? Cracking up. Um, it's okay. You're kind of, kind of quiet, but your your sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I I bumped you up a bit on 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 that stream, anyways. Thanks. Um. Was it me? Maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, no, I, I don't know, like, it just, it's in the top of my head that that guy that was, I was just very impressed by his uh, brick films, but I cannot really find it right now. Okay, never mind. Oh, what's everyone's thoughts on the um, Squadron, Star Wars Squadron game coming out? Ooh, yeah, I, uh, well, kind of like a dream come true for me. Honestly, uh, it has those like Rogu Squadron and X-Wing Alliance vibes with some Battlefront thrown into the mix. So all the good things from all like beloved genres that I do enjoy a lot. I you guys remember Rogue Squadron? I never played either of those. those. Those were probably before my time. Yeah, that was like that was my childhood kind of. But those were like, for years those were like the best Star Wars um, Starfighter games you can get. X-Wing Alliance was basically a... It was such a big game. I mean, it was like a lot of missions from 
the actual films, you would fly alongside like fleets of Star Destroyers. Back then it was like a big deal, X-Wing Alliance, I loved it, like, I still remember the mission when you were taking down the Executor, Super Star Destroyer, and it took like 5 minutes to fly alongside it, just from one tip to the other. And you can blow it up. Sounds cool. That was, that was like, uh, Ultimate Star Wars Simulator back in the day. So yeah, I like the, the squadrons, I hope it won't be limited to like small, um, you know, space-based skirmishes. I hope like maybe the campaign will be like something more grandeur than just like five-man or like six-man squadrons. Yeah. I think the, uh, the fact that all these capital ships really adds to the size of it. Like, that would be really cool to take them down. Yeah, but again, Star like, Destroyers. the best game that gave you this feeling of, of, of space saga, space, like, uh, epicness was X-Wing Alliance, because, like, some missions were uh, when you would, like, fight a fleet of Star Destroyers, and everything was, like, real-time, the distance was real-time, um, the speeds were, like, you know, jumping hyperspace and everything, um, and you, you, you would feel that you're in a small X-Wing trying to dodge like a bunch of Star Destroyers trying to get you and like a hundred TIE Fighters flying alongside them. Um, and that felt like you were like a fragile single pilot. So I kind of want to have this feeling in that game. I, I don't think it's gonna be the case, but I still hope. Never played X-Wing Alliance. Just look up your videos on YouTube to see what I'm talking about. Probably the graphics did not age very well, but the gameplay was like bomb. It was the closest you can get to, an, uh, to a space Star Wars simulator that you ever that there ever was, honestly. The only uh, Star Wars game I played besides like the newer stuff was the old Battlefront one and two. Those were really fun games. Those those, uh, were, those were fun too. Yeah, the OG ones. Is there a ship in if you want to fly really badly in the squadron, so... So I'm really excited for the Y-Wing, and that'll be cool because it actually drops bombs this time and works completely differently to the rest. Uh, cześć typowy Mikey, witam, hello, jak się masz? Dzięki, że za, za wpadnięcie na stream. We are bug number nine, by the way, so the castle is actually taking shape. I think I got three bugs left. It's actually 11 bugs in this one. I wanted uh, to congrat congratulate you on your new house. Oh, uh, thanks. I mean, it's, it's not finalized yet. We have a lot of things to still uh, finish, but yeah, we, we chose the new place. Uh, that's a commitment that we've been thinking about for a long time. And uh, especially that I'm planning to stay in the US, you know, uh, for a while. I'm a permanent resident. So yeah, the kids are growing. We kind of needed a bigger space and uh, this was a pretty good opportunity we had. So yeah. It's being built right now. Hopefully it's gonna everything is gonna go well, but it's still a lot of paperwork to go through. So it's not like, uh, you know, it's finalized yet, but yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. It's gonna be a big change for me, especially since one of the rooms I'm dedicating to, um, to a full like work from home studio or just Lego studio. So something I always dreamt of, of having my own space to actually, I mean, right now, you know, this studio I'm in, it's, it's a makeshift studio, to be honest. It's not something that I would be able to use for years um, because it's part of the bedroom, but having a, a, my own like space to actually uh, like, you know, focus and, and think about um, what I want to do with the content and everything and just having everything set up just for that purpose. That's kind of like my goal. I mean, it used to be like that when I worked for Brick Vault, so I, I remember uh, just having, uh, you know, Brick Vault Studio was such a game changer when it comes to working on, on, on videos. It's like, you can't even imagine how, how important it is to just have everything ready and have a space when everybody collaborates on the same thing and just like the space enables you to be motivated to work on that. And 
it's much harder at home uh, when you do it. So you kind of need that space to to be focused on what you wanna what you wanna do when it comes to to your YouTube content. Something I'm kind of missing right now, and I'm trying to to keep it up in the best way possible. But I, the distractions are everywhere when you work from home on this, and when you have your own room, it's just so much different. It's just night and day difference. But yeah, probably there's gonna be a... I hope there's gonna be one more, because I'm working on another vlog. I'm basically like, got back to this uh, mindset of, of capturing bits of a vlog every day here and there. So I'm trying when everything, some, when something interesting happens in my life, I try to have my camera with me on that one. Um, so there will be like occasional vlogs from now on. I'm trying to get back to this just capturing the moments mindset, you know. Uh, Viking Bricks is asking, how do you that, how do you like the Mario sets? Uh, Viking Bricks, welcome to the chat, by the way. Uh, I do enjoy them. That's something I wasn't expecting, I would say, because I wasn't planning to buy them. This is a, a, a basically a care package from LEGO. Um, but ever since I built that starter course and played with it on the stream, I was really impressed. Then my kids took it for like half a day and they loved it. So we had a blast just having fun. And uh, with the app when that tracks your coins and everything, that was super fun for the kiddo. So Lego won me there, basically. Um, and yeah, so far so good. It's a it's a enjoyable build. Uh, if it, even I think the castle would just look good as a display piece as well. So uh, Lego is doing the right thing with Mario, and I do enjoy it. And that's coming from somebody who who's not into Mario whatsoever. So it tells you something. I uh, I, I don't wanna messed up their name mickey is um asking do you know hang on i gotta take this okay <laughs> it's the uh, it's a he's a it's a polish nickname so uh, uh, typo, you, you you read typowy it's like there is no accents or anything it's it's a polish um word so you well, say you ty, ty, typo typo <laughs> it's typowy typowy my, so I think his name is Michael in Polish would be Michał, like uh, my name is Michał in Polish uh, and typowy is like common, it translates to common like common Mike kind of like translates, that's his nickname, common Mike um, do I know uh, the time of moving? Um, I think we're closing around the end of the year because it's a, it's a new construction so the developer has to finish it, of course, and we're going to be signing all the papers and mortgage and everything. Um, probably uh, somewhere in October, maybe? So if anything goes well, I will be moving around the end of the year. Um, so hopefully that I, I start 2021 from the new studio, hopefully, when it comes to videos. Uh, but that's still like in the making, so I'm keeping my finger crossed that everything will go well so far and so so good. Yeah, it's a long process. In the U.S., it's not easy. I mean, it's kind of easy, but you gotta follow through with a lot of paperwork. It's a big deal to buy a house. Oh, it's uh, your Polish name is Mikowai. Okay, I thought it was Michal. Sorry, we batch. See, yeah. I would butcher that name and go Mikolaj, but that's uh, Mikowai, that's the Polish pronunciation. Mikowai. It's like the equivalent would be uh, in English would be Nikol Nikolaus. Nik right. It's like uh, that's it's like Santa, Saint Nicholas. Mm -hmm. So that would be the equivalent in Polish. You say Mikowai. It's like uh, Santa Claus in, in the US, in Polish you say Święty Mikołaj, Santa Claus. W what uh, the, are the ones would you recommend picking up? Um, Viking Bricks, I honestly don't know, because the only th ones I have is the starter course and that Bowser's Castle. I did not have any hands-on experience with any other Mario sets. Um, I would direct you honestly to very good coverage from Bricks O'Brien. Uh, check out all the videos about Super Mario posted on Beyond the Brick. 
I'm a collaborator with Beyond the Brick, uh, Bricks O'Brien, my friend, who's also appearing on the streams very often. He's also a collaborator and he's a super huge Nintendo fan and he covered every single Super Mario set in full detail. So I, I think he's our, one of the best reviews you can find in the LEGO community right now because he really speaks from the level of, of a passionate Nintendo uh, fan but also is very critic about this so he was really looking forward to them and any disappointments he will tell you so check out Beyond the Bricks, Bricks O'Brien's um, reviews on Super Mario like I can even like I would direct everybody there because I honestly don't have opinion on the entire wave just those two sets basically but from my experience great concept and uh, and I hope it won't it will live for a long time in Lego I really do if you're like familiar with what sets have been made, are there any sets you would like to be made with different characters from Mario? Anyone close to your heart? I think I'm gonna to jump on that same bandwagon that I wanna see uh, the Princess Castle at some point. Like a Grandeur Princess Castle. Kind of like an Ultimate Collector Series direct to consumer big set, you know? A bit like the um, Disney Castle. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Like Diagon Alley or like Harry Potter's Hogwarts, you know? Something yeah. that like throws everybody off the plate, like, you know, like Ninjago came up with uh, the Ninjago City and everybody was like, whoa. So I kind of want the Super Mario to have this like pinnacle of a set in form of the Princess Castle. Bowser's airship would be cool. Uh, oh yeah, the airship too. Uh, the other uh, Koop Koopalings, yeah, that would be awesome. Now you... I don't remember many locations from Mario or, you know, many uh, adversaries. Honestly, like, the most Mario game I played was Super Mario on the NES. That's it. And that was like, you know, I won't lie to you if I say 20 years ago. So that that's how little connected to Mario I am. <laughs> but yeah, back in my time, I did enjoy playing Mario a lot. I know Super Mario was a hard game for me as a kid. I remember it was a pretty hard game. The music stop. No. I had the uh, Super Mario Bros. Nintendo DS game. And at the end you got to the Lava World. And I can't actually remember if you could like beat the end. I never, fi I don't think I finished it actually. I found the Super Mario to be like, I, I, I mean, I, I remember this as a kid. I was, I was a kid. I wasn't probably very good at video games, but Super Mar I, I don't think I ever beat Super Mario. I think the lo the farthest I went to like World 5-1 or like 5-2. And I remember I that specifically I remember Bowser's airship as the place when I always lost. Always. I don't think I ever beat that game. That's why I kind of want to get like a used NES system and play it again like in the OG version. I remember playing Zelda, uh, which one was it? I think it was Spirit Tracks on the Nintendo, and I could not beat this boss. Came back about five years later. <laughs> the easiest boss battle I've ever done. Probably <laughs> like, yeah, if I, if I come back to Mario right now, I probably will laugh at like how maybe easy it feels for me. But as a kid, I remember this as one of the hardest games I ever played, you know. But I, also, I didn't play many games. I was just a kid with a controller. That's about it. Have you played any Jedi Fallen Order, Like, Not yet, no. See, I've been playing that a bit. I bought it about before lockdown, maybe. And it, it's, it's really quite hard. Like, I, was, I started on the second hardest difficulty, which was uh -huh. definitely a mistake. Uh -huh. And I'm just taking my time with it. But there's just so much trying to find stuff and getting lost. and it's, Yeah. I think the last Jedi game I played was, uh, I think, Jedi Academy and Kotor. I think those were the last, like, Jedi-based games um, I used to play. Because, yeah, I had like, a, also a big of a hiatus from gaming. Well, like, when my kids were born, of course, you become a dad and you play less and less. That's why I kind of enjoy PlayStation 4 for the last few years, because PlayStation 4 allows me to hop in and off of the games anytime I want. It's much like different and kind of like a different vibe than playing on PC anymore. Um, I play a lot of casual like single player games. Uh, I play, even I play Fall Guys right now. Like it's actually pretty fun. And my kids play Fall Guys too. It's just a fun game. Um, 
but yeah, like I wanna, I have fallen order on my list, but honestly, my list becomes so long because I play long single player games, like hour or two at a time. I, I, I'm right now. I'm going through second Tomb Raider from like 2015, the Rise of the Tomb Raider, because I finished the first one, and now I'm playing through the second one. It's just like a casual, like I play one mission and I like hop off and just play again the next day or something. So. Um, I think Fallen Order will be the same. I'm gonna jump into it at some point when it comes like a real heavily discounted game. I'm gonna pick up on Black Friday and then I'm gonna play it. But I'm not even committing my time to any like multiplayer games to get to get good <laughs> because it's just impossible for me. I just have I don't that, have the time to dedicate to it. That Tomb Raider game is really good. I remember playing through that. That was really fun. Yeah, I played that one too. That one's good. I tried the uh, third one. Um, didn't have finished that one though. I have to still get that one. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, the funny thing is, cause I got the ra the the first Tomb Raider, I think, uh, I got it for like three bucks. Then the I purchased the Rise of the Tomb Raider for like another five or whatever, and they gave the Shadow of the Tomb Raider for free as a PlayStation Plus. So oh, nice. I have all three for like I don't know ten bucks. Plus, like, yeah, the, the, you, the PS Plus subscription. Have you got any wins in Fall, fall Guys yet? No, I've been, like, last night I've been playing with my wife and we got really close to the crown. I was, like, the third on that level when oh. you had to run up the hill. I was, like, the third. Full mountain, is That it? was the closest. I you watched Dr. Disrespect it? stream yesterday and he had, like, a, he had a match when he would play the final and the final was this level when you had to keep your tail but the final was only like seven people and only one person had a tail so the doc was playing and he got his tail uh like halfway through he lost it and he got the tail again like five seconds before and he was running was like two seconds to the finish line he was winning he was about to get the crown and this guy just jumps behind him you know when you jump and and, yeah. and dash and jumps and dashes and lands on him and steals the tail like when timer was like 0, 0.00 and the dog uh. loses and he just like throws his headphones and just walks away <laughs> <laughs> that was the... see that's i, quite, I yeah. find that quite funny about four guys is everyone was sort of playing it everyone loving it like a week later everyone yeah. hates a certain game mode they go i know they go it's tail like and they're just they're done with it <laughs> I know, I'm, I was so done a few times too, but yeah, it's a fun game, it's just like sometimes frustrating. I'm missing a brick, by the way. I've got a few bricks near me, what, what, what one is it? No, like, I, I, I'm i supposed to get this, um, this, this bracket, uh, two by uh, one bracket, and it's not here, like, what the... Flipty flop. Get in the back. Uh, I'm just checking if that's that was bug number nine. Maybe it's that, that's that or something. I mean, it's, it's a pretty common brick, so I can find it anyway. But um, from other set, but I don't see. Maybe I just place it somewhere else. Oh snap! Wait, I think I I see the problem. I I think I know what I did. I built the second arm wrong. Well done. I was the first in my game of all guys. I came second. Nice. Yeah. What one did you lose on? Um, the crap, the the final one. Oh, uh, was it? What map was it? The uh, crown one. Uh. I don't really like the um the egg one. Teammates yeah. never, never communicate. So it's pretty unfair when it's a team-based one because two teams will always just go against the losing team. Yeah, the the, the team ones are kind of weird it. sometimes. I gotta say. I watched guys a pretty good video on how to fix the ma uh, the different games and what sort of like for season two they should do to make it fairer. Yeah, it's sometimes it's very unfair. Like, uh, for example, especially for that um, uh, that crown hill, whoever's first and makes no mistake, who like whoever starts first in the first line and makes no mistake, they win, right? Yeah. 
for example, and I found a few glitches when you fall in certain places, I think in that whirly gig, uh, when you fall at the end, we just jump off the to the to the to the slime after like the first uh, wheel it spawns you at the last wheel so you can skip like three wheels just by falling to the slime there that's that's a bug so people just fall to the slime like fast and then they start at the very last step um so that's they definitely uh, need some polish that guy so yeah and and things like you know some glitches i don't know uh, people hacking. I've seen people hacking. Like I've seen a guy on that level when you... That's usually it's a final level and you jump on those tiles and they disappear and there's like a five levels. So whoever stands the last it wins, right? Um, and I've seen a guy just jumping in the air, for example. He was just jumping yeah, on, on like uh, invisible tiles. So things like that, you know. I'm a bit of an Xbox person, so I'm yet to play the game, but hopefully it comes yeah. to Xbox or something. Um, Feel free. Guys, hold on. I got to I got to backtrack because I messed up and I I don't know what bricks I used. Hold on. Sorry, I got to backtrack this. Cuz I Okay, I placed this. I gotta basically dis disassemble the whole thing. Uh, sorry about that. Do you guys see the um, the uh, second uh, trailer for Fall Guys, like the new uh, season? Uh, no, not yet. No. It's gonna be uh, medieval. Oh really? Yeah, they're gonna have like uh, night outfits and like witches and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Okay, I had to backtrack everything because I think I, I misplaced a few bricks. Hold on, I'm just gonna build it again real quick. I have a question for um, you guys in chat. Does any of you guys like uh, Lord of the Rings? What? I don't know many people who don't. Uh, can, can you say again? Lord of the Rings, do you guys like Lord of the Rings? Oh yeah, absolutely. To be honest, I've never actually watched Lord of the Rings. I did watch The Hobbit though, all three of them. I just haven't devoted the time to watching Lord of the Rings yet. Uh, Hobbit is much worse, in my opinion. Uh, the films, not the books. Yeah, same. It's I mean, it's only, it's only one book. Hobbit is one book, sorry. It's like keeps I keep getting confused. It's Hobbit is like three films but one book, and they're a pretty short one at this point. I like the Lord of the Rings movies. The um, I've only seen the first Hobbit. The other ones didn't really interest me. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed the books a lot. I enjoyed the movies a lot. Um, at one point in my life, I was so into a Lord of the Rings. I was uh, I was uh, buying. Um, the battle battle top minifigures and painting them from Lord of the Rings. So that's a pretty cool hobby I had. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like those like nowadays you can get like Warhammer minifigures, right? For example. So I was buying Lord of the Rings ones and uh, painting them. That was fun little I was like really into it when I was reading the books and I was really into that sort of thing. Oh, what's your thoughts on the uh mini like the Lego sets? Uh, honestly, I don't have much of an opinion. Again, like those came out exactly during my Dark Ages, so I didn't even know they existed back in the day. And I, when I uh, got back to Lego, I, I never backtracked myself to get back into things like I missed. Oh, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I did get. I a... Go on. Okay, I did get a few of the um, the set, of the Lord of the Rings. And good figures. I like the orcs. I remember when I was watching The Lord of the Rings, I went, we did like a sort of free night marathon. For the first time I watched them of the extended cuts. 
So it's like three hour ones. Yeah, uh, I had hackers on console. That's one. apparently that's possible. And maybe there's a crossplay. The I don't know if there's crossplay, but I, I'm playing on um, PS4 and I've seen people hacking. And I, I, I've seen I the guy the, jumping in the air and I've mine, seen. Which is really cool. Yes, I with my wife. We played. We switched controllers and we played. And she saw a speed hacker. A guy was basically dashing forward. It was like. He was he was faster than anybody else. He would just walk and and dash forward every few steps, and it was pretty weird. So yeah, there are hackers on console, and maybe there there's a crossplay, and they're coming from PC. I don't know, but it's it's it is the case. They gotta figure out how to do some anti cheats in Fall Guys. But people are hacking, and that's pretty annoying. Yeah. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Sorry guys, I'm gonna like mute myself every so and then and talk to the chat so I don't interrupt you. But yeah, don't don't for, don't worry about that. Chat. I think that's what that's what uh, uh, the streamers do. They kind of mute their Discord for a second and talk to chat. Okay, I, I'm backtracking that build for a second, but I think I'm almost there. Okay, this is gone. Da, da, da. Got it. Okay. You guys have any new sets you're building right now? And any any proud purchases from Lego you guys get? Not uh, yet. I'm still waiting for the Fiverr first battle pack to come out. Oh. oh well. To come back out. <laughs> yeah, you heard my story how I got this one, right? Like from a friend. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was pretty cool of him. I'm still so grateful. He doesn't have any more, does he? <laughs> no, he ah. only had he only had two, and I did not even ask him. It was um, ah. I was watching his stream like we chat randomly, and he told me on the stream like, hey, I actually have two, like, come over and pick it up. I can give it to you. I was like, no, you like, you don't have to. Like, yeah, come over. And the next That's day true. I come over ready to, like, buy it from him or, like, just to borrow for the review. And he's like, dude, like, just take it. That's my, like, gratitude for your content. And that's it. And he gave it to me. I was like, dude, thank you. Because, yeah, he lives Hi. in San Diego, too. So super cool friend. That's so nice. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait for it to come back out. I, I might wait for it to go on sale, but I mean, they're in such demand. That's did you try, really when it came out on LEGO.com, did you try ordering or did you miss on that one? No, I, I just missed out on that one. Okay. Didn't have much money at that time, so. I gotta say, I wasn't paying attention either. Like, I was thinking about buying an extra one, but I just skipped it. I think I was busy that day and I forgot it's coming out and I just skipped it. I don't have mine yet either. I, I mean, I haven't gotten any yet. For all that's worth, guys, like, if you don't feel like you're missing out, I think if you're patient enough, everybody will be able to get one soon. Just, you know, it's gonna just appear in the stores anyway. So don't feel too bad about it. It's like, remember when the Mandalorian battle pack came out? When Mando was popular as a show and nobody was able to buy the battle pack for like weeks? Um. And then it just became really easy to get after a while, so... I still need to get that one as well. I've kind of got like a list in my head of ones I need to get before they... Mm -hmm. Before they're gone. I my next mistake, purchase... So... My, uh, my next purchase probably is uh, the Nintendo NES. That's on my list for yeah. the next one, yeah. That one's pretty cool. I really I want it. Like, because I, I wanted to get a bunch of solo sets. And then I missed out on them, and now they've gone up in price by quite a bit, so it's a shame. Which ones? Uh, the battle pack. The, the, uh, patrol battle pack. The speeder chase one, which, How are you uh, doing, Rickman? So the one with Kira Thanks for joining. and Han. The there is no crossplay? Also. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's why I was, I was and so surprised that I've seen hackers on console. I don't even know how to, how like, you even hack bikes. on console. From like the pirate people. Yeah. Can't remember their name. But yeah, those one. Oh Hans Speeder and I can't remember the other name. Other one of the uh... Yeah, I like these sets quite a bit, the solo sets. Uh are they like really so much more in value right now? Is that is that a thing now? 
Oh, I'm, I'm one of those people who doesn't like buying things at full price, <laughs> so I'm always like looking for deals on eBay, yeah. know what's going on, you know. But yeah, they, they like I was having a look at the battle bags, and they were more expensive for sure. Like I can find one in Brick Vault, uh, Bricklink, sorry, mm -hmm. in this country, like that, which is a bit annoying. So Welcome back. I feel you. Commands here in uh, D E E. E -E. Yeah, I see, I see uh, Brickman. I sometimes I mute myself to say hello, so you guys don't hear me saying it. But yeah, I see Brickman in the chat. I see D in the chat. So thanks for joining today. We're just chilling with Mario tonight. Today, tonight. I keep saying tonight because I usually stream at night, and right now it's not really. California is like what? Uh, 5 p.m. 5:04 is just trashes my. Okay. Oh, I've just noticed the 501st on your screen, taunting us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I, I'm so grateful I was able to get it, because I would probably hunt it, uh, try to hunt it down uh, soon and get at least one copy, but yeah, just saved me a lot of hassle. So very much appreciated that help from my friend. I can't wait to get mine, because those are my favorite clone troopers, and the Kashyyyk ones are my favorite also. Uh, tip of the mic, he says, well, for me it's 2 a.m. <laughs> I keep forgetting we have Polish viewers. And we have another Polish viewer, uh, Piotr Madej. Pozdro, cześć, witam, Polish viewer as well. Thanks for joining, dzięki. Yeah, I keep forgetting that Poland is like middle of the night right now. What, what, what do you guys find the most appealing about the 501st Battle Pack? Is that because you just love the <clears throat> that um, Legion of Clone Troopers? Is that because you're connected to it more personally or...? Or is there something truly appealing about this set for you? I feel um, like it takes all the boxes ready for a set. It's got great minifigures, very attached to them from the Clone Wars show. Really good vehicles that aren't just like, I don't know, normally in Battle Packs there's, you know, a random vehicle that doesn't really make sense in the universe, but they're, you know, they're proper vehicles, so mm -hmm. it takes all the boxes for me. Although okay. my favorite uh, Legion is the one I fought, you know, like Wolf Pack, the Plo Koon one. Oh, those are good. Those are good clowns. What about my Polish vlog channel, The Mikey is asking? Um, so here's the thing. I, yeah, I do have a Polish vlog channel that I kind of stopped uploading to last year. Uh, basically, because I'm, I focus on my work and my cool factor and all these things. Uh, so yeah, the Polish channel, I think the last video I made on it was like, hey, I'm making an English channel called The Cool Factor. And then that's true that I never uploaded anything beyond that. Um, so I think I, I posted a few weeks ago that I will be actually taking those old vlogs because uh, you guys seem to be enjoying my vlogs. So I just want to like show them to my English audience. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take those vlogs already edited about certain like things in my past life that I think I, I, I was my, when I was my prime on my Polish channel, I was vlogging quite a bit. And I, I even made myself like a challenge when I vlogged for 30 days straight every day. So I made 30 videos in 30 days. Uh, and that was a big deal for me because I was like working and I was actually vlogging and working. It was a crazy uh, marathon. But I took it as a challenge and I made it. So I, I think I'm gonna just post these vlogs. They were like different vlogs about different topics or like things in life, some motivational stuff, whatever. Um, and I'm gonna take those vlogs and embed, cause they're all in Polish. So I'm gonna embed um, on screen encoded subtitles into them. And I'm gonna post them here on the Cool Factor as like, uh, I don't know, Mike's retro vlog or something, something, something. Uh, cause I don't think I'm gonna, I want to revitalize my Polish channel, um, maybe in the future, but right now I don't see the uh, the time to do it. So I just want to like make that content alive again, kind of, and maybe post here. So that's what I'm planning to do. But eventually I want to come back with Polish vlogs because I see a lot of people from Poland are still like enjoying them. Uh, I still get views on those vlogs, even though they're like from a year ago. So definitely something I, I want to try again but right now cool factor is my main focus and just my my job so i mean cool factor is not my job but part of my life more than the, than the polish channel yeah i'm sure that'll be really interesting those vlogs Sorry about my dog barking hey no worries it's cute yeah it's a cute dog 
<laughs> you should you should pay some dog tax and send a picture on Discord or something. See, I'm I'm quite you know I'm obviously very interested in Lego, but I mean the more variety on the channel, the more you know the best I think I feel like so. Yeah, I mean I, I kind of market the cool factor as a as a Lego channel, but I I said to myself and to my audience from the very beginning that. I don't want to feel like restricted to being a Lego channel. So I know it probably hurts my audience or my algorithm because it's a very variety content. But I still feel good about making those videos or sharing like other things than Lego. And I would just feel bad. Maybe maybe if I grow enough of a, you know, if I get a big enough audience, I'm going to make something like a lot of people are doing, having like a Lego content channel on this as a main line of of my work but move everything to a vlog channel like you know cool factor vlogs or something uh or mic vlogs whatever uh on the side and a lot of people are doing it and it seems to be successful but you have to kind of uh, i don't feel like growing two channels at once right now i feel like i want to focus on the cool factor first and post everything here and then when i feel like it's the right time to move on and uh split the content and then i'm gonna do it but not not yet Yeah, reposting them into subtitles. That's what I'm trying to do because I asked that question and, and I had like 89 yes favorable response from like 200 votes. Uh, so I think people kind of want to see that. So I was trying to see if that's if that feels cheesy to repost old content in different language but with subtitles and people kind of want to see it because nobody will watch the Polish vlogs anyway uh, if you're like an English speaker. So yeah, I, I'll do it as an experiment and post them as a separate playlist and make like post maybe one a week or something work on the subtitles for the next one and all this stuff so it's gonna be living in a separate playlist on the cool factor as a, like a filler content but i still want to like share that with people so definitely and my phone just died i'm gonna just charge it, oh, it was... yeah it was running the mario app and just died. i'm just gonna recharge it and we're gonna come back to it in a sec is it charging how's the model going Good, I think I have like one bag left. Did you find where you went wrong on that arm? That's the last bag. I gotta charge the phone. Oh, juice. Okay. Uh, did, did you guys see the um, uh, stuff that got released at uh, uh, DC Fandom, like the uh, Batman trailer and stuff? Oh, yeah, they were really good. Yeah, that was that, I like that a lot. The movie, I can't wait for it to go see that. And um, the uh, Gotham Knights, that that game looks epic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you guys watch the entire Gamescom? Because I only watched a few moments of it. Uh, I I watched, for... Yeah, bits and pieces of it. Okay. Do you see the Batman trailer, Mike? No, not yet. Oh wait, no, the new movie trailer? Yes, yes, I saw that one. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Yeah. I mean, a bit violent, Batman. Like, chill, chill out a little. Yeah, but, he's yeah. like, he's pretty violent and he has like this muscle car for the Batmobile, like, whoa. It's supposed to be, uh, I heard a detective-like story. It's, it feels like a, like a crime noir story. Like something, yeah. I don't know, Nicolas Cage would play in, you know? Well, it's got the Riddler as the villain, I think, so that'll be cool. Yeah. And the Penguin and uh, Catwoman too. So it's, it's interesting because it seems like it's just the Batman, right? It feels like a reboot uh, under different like line of stories. So it's, you know, Christopher Nolan was a new Batman entirely. It was something between a superhero genre and like a thriller, like political thriller sort of with villains being very true and to the bone like bane or you know the joker um with heath ledger uh, so i think that was a fantastic reboot from nolan so i want to see which way they go right now with another reboot of batman right it feels like you can retell the batman story like so many times it can it can feel different every way in every way yeah, every time sure. that's kind of cool you know we went from like a cheesy batman we went from the cheesy uh, 1989 Batman with the Mr. Freeze and all these crazies. Then we went to Christopher Nolan's dark uh, thriller-esque Batman. And now we're going to this noir detective story Batman. 
I like this. I, I honestly like it. I, I mean, we it. went from we went from like the Riddler of the you know Batman and Robin. Oh, that was that was the three. cheesiest. <laughs> and now we've gone to like some guy played by Paul Dano putting duct tape on people's body, I like know. real dark, like completely polar opposite. I, I, I agree with the uh, person in the chat. They said this is supposed to be a uh, year two for Batman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just waiting Which for my phone means... to catch some charge so I can restart it. Probably means we won't get to see his parents die for like the hundredth time in cinema. Sure. <laughs> seems like, uh... I what way the popcorn falls this time. Like, um... Spider-Man, you always see his uh, <laughs> yeah. Uncle Ben die all the time. Can we just move on with that? We know the story. <laughs> I we, know, uh, right? Yeah. We, yeah. And we'll see, I mean, some, like... I have some good feelings about this movie. I think it's gonna be solid. It's gonna be, um, you know, the, the Joker um, with uh, Jacqueline Phoenix. Mm -hmm. That was entirely new look on the Joker. And like, completely 180 degrees, right? Um, yeah, so great. maybe Batman will have the same feeling. I enjoyed the, the, the new Joker. It was very gruesome and very dark, but the story was fantastic. And uh, I want to see the Batman to be this like, yeah, like Gabriel saying, I'm vengeance. And that single line just really like sets the tone for the film. I'm vengeance, you know, it's so, it's, it's so, it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be very cool. Wacken Phoenix won the Oscar for Joker. And I, I yeah, would be exactly. For some people might be up there you know getting some good awards for this like really good cast if i think got, that... got colin farrell as the yeah favorite. completely that is the trend right now to like go into those dark tone movies because i think when the story is good and the filmmaking is like on point uh those dark tone movies like that stop glorifying the superheroes and making them like real humans with real problems and moving into this dark you know uh, thriller-esque um, setting, I think it kind of wins all the awards. It's like the way it is right now. What, what do you think of Robert Pattinson? I think it'll be great, personally. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I for Robert Pattinson, I still have his Twilight failure yeah. in my in my head all the time. Like he, he like, I I'm, I bet he's a good actor, but I I can't get his Twilight vampire out of my head. I just can't. He's like, he set the tone for me and I just don't like the actor because of his single role as a as a Twilight vampire, sparkling vampire. So I, I don't think I watched any other movies with him. I'm certain he's a good actor. Maybe I should watch some darker movie with him to like change my tone. It's like when I hated Leo DiCaprio because of the Titanic and he was like this cheesy youngster. And then Leo DiCaprio became one of my favorite actors of all time. I think what set the tone for me as him as a dramatic actor was the Blood Diamond. And then the Inception. Inception's great. And and uh, that's what I knew. Like he's an excellent actor. Like, Titanic was like whatever, right? But everything else he made was fantastic. I think Robert Pattinson, like, whether or not you know, Twilight's a bit cheesy, silly movie, but he's done some like proper ones since then. Like whiskey, welcome. The Sean Technic Bricks, welcome. Thanks uh, for joining, he's guys. He's gonna be in the upcoming upcoming tonight. Where are you guys going? Anyone heard of that movie? Which one? Uh, no. it's, the, it's by uh, Christopher Nolan. It's called Tenet. It's, it's like it's, sort of... Is it coming out right now? It should be coming out right now, right? Yeah, I think it is coming out right now. And it's like time travel seeming like... But it, it has... I don't think it has any, any release in the US right now. I don't think anybody's playing it. Uh, at least in my area in California, I think all the theaters are shut down. So I can't even watch it. Is that because of the corona? Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't think it has a wide release in the US at all. But yes, I, I wait for, dude, I wait for every Christopher Nolan movie. Like, yeah. The Dunkirk? I dude. Must be good. I went to the Dun for to see the Dunkirk to like full on IMAX surround sound theater. And I was like one of the only people in the in the whole room. That movie basically just knocked me off my foot. Like, honestly. Yeah, that's that's a really good one. Sound design and just this. The, the, uh, I think the whole st the whole thing on that movie was first the sound design, which was like insane. Is the least way you can say it. It's, it was just groundbreaking sound design. But also um, they had this technique 
when apparently the whole movie is built around a growing single rhythmic tone that has a name in like the, the musical science. So the, there's the tone that feels like it's constantly growing and it's like this bass um, rhythm that is playing through the entire movie and you barely notice it, but it's the never ending growing tension from the very first scene with that shooting in the alleyway to the, there's some cars might, but it ends with the very last second of the movie and it's always there, like no matter which scene you, you look at it. I think I, I read an article on this and that's why the Dunkirk, feel, the Dunkirk feels so overwhelming because of that technique they use for sound design and for growing tension you feel while watching the movie. And, and just, yeah, just look it up. Pretty fantastic. The score of that movie is done by Hans Zimmer, so yes. that's not surprising at all. Yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. Okay, let me see my phone show. I think it charged. Okay, we gotta run the Mario up again. It's charging now. I should have plugged in before. Whatever. Okay, let the Mario. I kind of like the fact that they had to show Patin uh, Pattinson, like, basically, I don't know, destroying this poor, uh, poor bad guy in the trailer for the Batman just because he's he's played I don't know cheesy Batman. yeah so uh, wait who's 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 pl Pattinson playing in that trailer because I, I watched this trailer only once so uh, wait Pattinson is the Batman right am I right yeah I think so why the, why, I was confused that somebody else was Batman in this one. I, I didn't pay attention, honestly. I thought Batman was the bad guy. Uh, never mind. But yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see. I mean, if you if you get the role of Batman, you kind of become, you know, you have to pay, you have to play a legendary role. It's like becoming James Bond, you know. I heard some people say that uh, he looks like emo Batman. I feel so embarrassed now, but like, of course he's. But I, I wasn't really paying attention. Like I, I, I just zoomed through this trailer, but I think I actually saw this trailer like it was leaked maybe some time ago. There was some pictures from this, but I never ever noticed it was Robert Pattinson. So yeah, now that I know he's he's the Batman, I gotta pay give him a lot of. I mean, I won't give him much of the benefit of the doubt, but I wanna see him be a good Batman. So maybe he's gonna change my image of him from being this cheesy vampire to actually a real actor. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully it's gonna change in my mind. But yeah, for me, like whoever plays the Batman has the same weight as somebody playing James Bond. Like Daniel Craig, you know, took the Bond role and he also became one of my favorite actors. And I have a few Batmans I did not like. I did not like the George Clooney's Batman. Uh, I did like... Um, uh, who was the Batman in Ben Affleck, right? In Superman, it was kind of okay. Christian Bale was okay, Batman, for sure. Uh, I'm streaming still. I don't have any dropped frames, so must have been your connection issue. Anyhow, I think we can we can reconnect my phone. Um, so we yeah we can go back to the building. So it's it's charged up. So let's see where we are. Okay, so this is the, basically the last step. Uh, Bowser. Uh, what's everyone's thoughts on the uh, Razor Crest getting like in the U.S. the name getting changed? I was surprised by this honestly. Like I don't know what to say. I'm here, yeah. I thought it was, uh, I've been called the, uh, Razor Crest. I didn't know it was going to be called, uh, the Mando's, uh, ship. It's called, uh, the Bounty Hunter Transport Ship or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys know what the deal is with that? Is that some licensing issue with Disney or Lucas? What is it? I have no idea. Because I, I have my pre-order, and as you look at the BrickFans article, it says, my pre-order says the exact same thing. It was changed from Razorcrest to now it has like some bunch of like, 
naming, say, default, uh, Mandalorian transport ship, uh, Arizona, like, sorry, Arizona, um, uh, Australia and New Zealand is is the Razor Crest. So it's like different parts of the world. It has different naming for some reason, and it shows on my pre-order, which is weird. And by the way, you you can't even there is no page for the Razor Crest on Legocom whatsoever. It's you you can't even search for it. My pre-order is still active, but you can't. There is no set like this. You can't even find it. <laughs> they just removed it. Uh, Whiskey says I got the Razor Crest early in Australia. It's still called the Razor Crest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen some people getting them in Australia, and I've seen some uh, British YouTubers getting this one as well already. So. I don't know, like, all I'm seeing from that name change is that... I feel it's gonna be another case of, ooh, collectible box, you know. Uh, the OG, like, yeah. Razor Crest, it will be, like, worth more of a box than the box saying Bounty Hunter and Transport Ship or whatever that is. I can only see that being sp spinned off uh, in the crazy way from the, by the, you know, Lego collectible world. Because sometimes we are pretty weird about what is collectible and what is not in Lego. Imagine if Osprey came out right now and says like multi-purpose tilt rotor aircraft and nobody would bat an eye. It looks like an Osprey, it's not named as an Osprey and everybody would still be after the, or the original Osprey box. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, uh, Whiskey is also saying, I think it's a European issue. Someone is producing models called the Razor Crest. Oh, so maybe... Maybe it's a conflict of uh, interest between toy makers. But wait, that's, that's stupid. I mean... That means like what? Only one company makes to name gets to name Star Wars ships as they are, and the other company has to name them differently. What? That would be stupid. Unless it's a different toy called the Razor Crest. It's not even uh, related to Mandalorian, maybe. Maybe. Rocky, Rocky had a bad internet connection. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Weird collectors will always want the variant stuff, but not everyone. Yeah. I'm not subscribing to this whole like, oh, fake print or like misprinted, make it collectible. I don't agree with that at all. Like the worst example would be that uh, Princess Leia who came out with like Miss Molded Hair and it was going for like, I don't know, $500 on Brickling. That was like the biggest stupidity I ever heard. But hey, it's collectible, it's one of a kind, like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna be right back, I'm gonna... Yeah. Okay, we're building the actual Bowser, so I think the last... There's one more bag, actually, in the last bag, it's weird, because... It tells me to build the bag... Maybe I just skipped it, but I think the bags are mixed. You build bag 11 first, and... I don't know, maybe I, I just accidentally skipped it, but... Wait, 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 wait. Oh boy, I'm gonna... I'm making so many mistakes right now, it's crazy. Very sloppy of Lucas film, normally they're on top of that stuff. Uh, it's just a name. Yeah. But you know, there's probably a lot of legal, legal whatever, proceedings um, and deals in place that they have to abide by and it's just corporate stuff. So, Lego is a corporate no matter how much you deny it, but they have to follow a ton of um, 
uh, rules imposed by you know Disney or Lucasfilm or whoever is in hold of the IP. I mean, I don't, I couldn't care less, honestly. As long as I get the set, whatever. It can be named like, you know, Unikitty's Wild Space Ride or something, and I will still buy it. Mm. Oh, you're in the waiting room? I'm um, sure I'm gonna just move him back. Wink. Okay, you're back. Is he? Rafi? <clears throat> hey, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. I didn't even notice we were gone, sorry. There's some uh, construction going on that's messing up the internet now, so. Oh, really? Interesting. Cool. I'm back. Welcome Hello. back. Yeah. Okay, I do enjoy the Bowser build actually, it's pretty cool. It's pretty complex too. Yeah. Is he nearly done though? Uh, yeah, I think I have true. one more bag for that Bowser head on the castle. Um, I think I, I, I misplaced the um, the order of building, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. Your kids are getting a little fun out of that tomorrow. Another four hours. What's up? Your kids are going to get a little fun oh, yeah. of that tomorrow. A little of I'm just gonna get them here, throw them a set on the table, put the camera on rolling, and we got review for, for Monday. <laughs> They're gonna review it better than me, probably. They're gonna show how cool it is to play with. How's the uh, build? Do you like the build of the Bowser's castle? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, when you build while streaming, it's kind of a different experience. Um, it's hard for me to tell how well the set are being built when I stream because sometimes I just do it on standby and I don't remember how cool things were. I'm not sure if you guys have the same thing, but when I produce a set for a video or like stream it, it's, it just feels different than building it uh, in silence by myself. Um, but so far, like as a set I stream, uh, it's I can tell it's it's a pretty fun experience. The castle is interesting build because the main chunk is the biggest thing and then you build the modules around it and I think you just add the modules at the very end. Um, so in that way, yeah, it's like small chunks, usually not that difficult. I think the mechanics will be pretty fun to play with. So far so good. You work at Beyond the Brick? Uh, I mean, yes, I'm part of the crew, but I don't like work work with them, it's not an employment. It's a collaboration, like long-term collaboration. But yes, this is me, Mike, from Beyond the Brick. Of sorts. Yeah, I think While we're I Beyond the Brick. Or, yeah, what's up? While I was disconnected, did, did anyone notice like uh, in the new Batman trailer that he has the eye makeup on with his oh, cowl yeah, No, I don't oh. want to play the trailer on the stream because probably I'm going to get a hit by copyright claim, but... Yeah. Uh, I gotta check out the trailer in full detail after I finish. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool because obviously in all the office it like magically disappears when he takes it off and it just sort of shows how dark it goes in this new movie and it's been like all realistic and not. Mm -hmm. A re review made by kids would be the most accurate review probably because technically those sets are for kids. <laughs> Mario is for, for kids, technically. I mean, funny thing is that even if you open the app, um, it's so easy for kids to navigate. And when you want to check out the app version or some like uh, legal settings or whatever, it, there's like a button called for like for grown-ups and you have to like confirm you're a grown-up by making some, I don't know, some weird mathematic um, equation. And that, that's the only way you can check like the app settings or the version or upgraded or anything, but everything else is geared towards kids even on the app. So I bet um, kids reviewing this would be the most accurate ever because that's the target audience. What if you're just a grown up that's pretty bad at maths? Just locked out well, of the app. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I should not be saying that anything is for kids on this channel because like COPPA, uh... it's for adults. <laughs> Forever. 
It's for collectors. This guy watching. I know. No, honestly, like, Coppa is not giving any hard time to my channel, or I don't think anybody is getting hard time from Coppa. I think there was a bit of a blown over fear that we're gonna get all shut down. But Jung's example, my example, a lot of the channel's example is like, as long as you are an adult appearing and making, speaking like a normal adult person reviewing toys, um, you're not like, hey kids, you know, come bring your whatever, and there's like a cheesy music in the background. Uh, that means you're not making kids content. And Jung's example, as he switched back to, and not back, he kind of um, moved to being in-person reviewer. Like he never used to be like that. He always has only hands on the set and stuff like that. But that alone made him um, compl in, in compliance with Coppa. So, my format was always this, like I always show myself on the videos, I always say in this normal adult language what I'm, talk what I'm doing, what I'm talking about, and it never gave me any problems. So, no matter if I review a Mario set or if I you know, work on a collector series set, whatever. Okay, we're almost there with Bowser. Bowser is actually pretty complex, actually, I'm gonna say. Oh, what's everyone's thoughts on the uh, rumored uh, Looney Tunes CMF for next year? Dude, I'm so down. Like, my favorite of all time is just Willy the Coyote and the Roadrunner. I just want this How to be Lego. I want this so bad. How are they gonna do that in Lego? That's gonna have to have some special. I don't know, pieces. that's what that, that that's the big question. Like I wanna see I mean, you know, we got the Disney fix with a lot of custom molding. Um so it's possible making like a custom Bugs Bunny head or something. That's what I wanna see what, what, what leads to this. Like what what's gonna be? Uh, are we getting sets? Are we getting all the mess ups that the Willy made while catching the Roadrunner? Are they gonna make the the Acme Anvil or something? Uh, that would be cool with Road Runner and Coyote, like uh, uh, um, a lever to like pull the wall. Or like make it like uh, a painting and a real tunnel, like he, you know when he always paints the tunnel, and so the Road Runner would hit the wall, but he always runs through and he always hits the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, like, like I said, with a function like this, you gotta like drop uh, the real tunnel and like the painting of the tunnel. That would be funny. That would be cool. What other Looney Tunes are there? So there's, you know, Coyote, Bugs Bunny. Was Catch the Pigeon? Was that Looney Tunes? I, I want Tweety, I want Sylvester the Cat. Um, no, Pooty Cat and all this stuff. I want Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. Those were actually pretty violent cartoons if you think about it. <laughs> but everybody grew on them, and I don't think I'm a violent person after watching Looney Tunes, so. <laughs> Doesn't it compare to like uh, Tom and Jerry? Yeah. Oh, Tom and Jerry was <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gruesome sometimes. But I think of like Home Alone and stuff like that, you know, those sort of old yeah, I mean, movies and kids TV of shows. my generation, like we watched some weird stuff. And now, <laughs> if you made a cartoon like Tom and Jerry, like everybody would freak out because like every everything is like everyone is is politically offended nowadays. It's like, ooh, a cat hitting a mouse with a wooden hammer. How much of a violence you can possibly get for a kids' cartoon? Oh my god! Ah! And the people just freak out. And like, dude, that's I've been watching this for years, and it was the the, the funniest stuff ever. I think I mentioned this in chat before, but there's this um, English movie I think, called Watership Down. It's about these rabbits. It's a cartoon one, and I mean that is such a dark like book it's based off and there's some <laughs> really haunting scenes in this kid's movie it's like i think it was pg I, I, at the time i don't know i should mention it but the darkest ever cartoon like just don't go watch it you should not the darkest ever cartoon i ever watched is happy tree friends um <laughs> don't, don't, don't even look it up i mean <laughs> you you've been warned <laughs> it scarred you that much but it's 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 adults only so you've been warned it starts off a very um, 
very uh, innocent, but oh boy, oh boy, don't look it up. <laughs> it's like beyond anything I ever seen in a cartoon. So I feel like the older you go back in as like TV shows and stuff, the more. There are just some really People just cared less, you know? People just like, it wasn't the main topic to fill your rage. Cartoons were, uh, and were always weird and kind of violent in this funny way. And nobody batted an eye because it was not an issue. It was just like cartoon violence. So it's always been there. But for some reason, everybody just became super woke <laughs> and aware over the years. And now it's like, <gasps> you know, like I, I've, I've heard stories of kids in Poland, for example, getting uh, like timed out or detentioned for using, I don't know, like stick um, carbines to play war in a kindergarten. Something I used to do like a ton of times, you know, playing soldiers and stick stuff. Carbon? Oh, sorry. I mean, like, okay, so you run around and you... Um, I gotta switch to my build camera because I came back building. Um, you just run around and just do like da 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 you know, just play war or like play soldiers and like you know, whatever and so everybody played that when I was a kid and no, nobody better than I but now you can get like suspended for doing that in school, so. I'm laughing about a comment by Brick Films. he said you know I'm gonna look it up. Oh no. <laughs> Mouse oh, hits a cat with a big bat, PTA oh my god. <laughs> Oh yeah, like imagine like a new, uh, like imagine a world without Tom and Jerry and now somebody makes a cartoon that's exactly Tom and Jerry and yeah, we would have like PETA meltdown on Twitter saying like, animal violence, no, yeah. you know, that's what, that would be the exact you know, as, case. As important like, you know, animal animal welfare is peter is peter will freak about out about everything you know i, 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 I absolutely agree like uh, animal cruelty is real and you know uh po poachers right like people hunting uh, elephants in africa that's the real issue right people using animals for food people like violating rights of animals people abusing animals that's absolute real issues and i i i'm all in for this not really happening it's not should not be you know, a thing in the modern world. Uh, and there are organizations who make it right and, and fight for the right thing, but PETA is just sensation, yeah. sen sensationalism and nothing else. And honestly, I cannot have less respect for them. Yeah, same. It's like, you know, there's obviously problems. It just, ooh, notice us, you know, we shout a lot, we don't do anything, just notice us. Oh my God, it's yeah. just the whole thing. It's just like, so, I feel so like... pathetic. It has a sort of negative effect on animal welfare and all these groups actually doing stuff like, you know, for the food we eat or wild animals. Uh -huh. But then you've got Peter out there going, don't say a phrase like hit two birds with one stone because it's anti-animal, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, I don't know, it's almost damaging. They're like the atten they're, they're not bridge. active people. They're not really actively helping animals. They're just shouting a lot and getting attention. That's all they do. Yeah, for sure. I, I never, I never see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm biased here. Maybe I didn't look right. But I've never seen a positive PETA like action that actually made a difference. You know, I never seen them do anything that's worthwhile mentioning. Like something like, oh, they saved like you know a shelter from being shut down and saved a lot of dogs from being euthanized. Like, I never heard them do it. Maybe they do this, but the way they market themselves, it throws me off every time. They're just so in your face. They're just like, you walk in a mall and suddenly like, Hi, I'm Peter, would you like to donate? Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, what are you guys doing? Like, I don't know. Like, they did this one, which was they tried to get rid of, like, I don't know, 100 year old phrases that are about, like, I don't know in some way hurting an animal and like came up with all these equivalents and it's like this this is this isn't affecting any animal you know uh -huh. like this this ain't doing any good out there it's ridiculous like, yeah waste of everyone's time okay when do i build the the bowser's head Wait, did I did I miss a, a step? Like, where's my instruction for this? I can't find it. 
The app is being weird right now. Yeah, Bowser looks great. I'm gonna show you guys in a second, but I wanna... I wanna... Guys, like, there's no build for the... What's... What? Oh, wait, did I just not... Oh, because my phone died before I even finished. Okay, sorry. So it was in the previous step. This bag was in the previous step. So that's Bowser. Arr. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it looks awesome. Has the, the jump scanner uh, in the back. Looks pretty darn awesome. The face is all printed, so definitely something to be uh, impressed by. Like it quite a bit. It's pretty darn cool. Um, oh, he's cool. Yeah, he's very cool. Nice. I'm, I'm, I shall build the... Um, I just skipped... Okay, now, because I, the bag number two was my previous step, I just... when my phone died. Okay, let's pretty finish... Cool that's brick built, and not just like a picture. I know, right? Yeah, and that's that new piece for the shelf base is actually a new... kind of like an octagonal um, plate. Isn't that rubber? No, it's plastic, it's, it's a plate. No, I'm talking play. about on the on the shell, on the shell of Bowser. No, everything is Lego, uh, plastic. No, no rubber. It's all plastic. It's normal ABS Lego. No, I'm talking about the white, the uh, tan um, oh. on the shell. No, those are those are the um, pyramid um, tiles. Sort of. Okay. No, there, thought, there's not. Uh, those are the Bowser pieces that came out some time ago, but everything here is, is a full brick. It's, there is no rubber. Only the, okay, the, the ears are rubbery, like this is rubbery. I must be of. thinking about this right here, this uh, red uh, uh, Koopa on uh, the that? That, that. No, there, there's nothing, um, the only rubbery thing on, on, on the Bowser is his ears. Those are the, the fang pieces that are kind of like... Robbery. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's finish that head um, of the castle, and I think we're gonna assemble the castle as the last thing. In my school, they wanted to ban the war. Um, to to kill two birds with one stone is like a expression and they try to say hit two three branches with a stone well this is, like this is the political correctness gone too far on, to me like but, it's like what's Mike, the we, point we don't have enough trees like we can't just go chucking stones at trees like honestly <laughs> there's gotta be a better one yeah i don't know it's uh it's a weird world we're living in Bob builds. Welcome to the stream, by the way. I see you. In my school, they wanted to ban plastic water bottles because someone accidentally threw one near the teacher. What? Oh wow! Oh. Accidentally? How does Just it happen accidentally? Sure. I mean, Just even if it was on purpose, you can punish the person who did it. But what the water bottle has to do with it? I mean, what's like? No, um, it's the true culprit there. What is what is the problem here? Is the person not the item? I mean, surely if you ban plastic bottles, you've got like metal bottles. Which I mean, more environmental, but yeah, it's the danger of them being thrown. Yeah. <laughs> I see you, Piotr. I just can't say that word because it's a Polish curse. <laughs> okay. Hit the, hit the ground with a stone. Whoa, that's floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're abusing the floor. We're stamping on the. F we're, we're walking on the floor. We're abusing the floor. Am I no? Yeah. Weird times. I know. Weird times. People getting offended by everything. Some of the jokes I know from my like younger years that are were inappropriate back then, but are so tripled down in uh, probably. Uh, inappropriate right now, it's kind of funny. Like the jokes we throw around between my friends and I were like... Well, something you don't want to tell your parents for sure. 
Well, there's a sort of side of like our political correctness gone mad, but then there's also the side of there's been so much like good improvements to. Yeah, you know. I think what's, I think generally speaking, what is bad just makes the headlines. Yeah. Um, it's sensationalism is a real problem in the media right now. I think whatever something sounds more atrocious or just plain insane or just bad or just sensational then it makes the headline you want you don't want to say good stories because they people just agree with them and there is no discussion and people just that's nice but when you say a, a something terrible and and bump it up to 11 with sensationalism and then people argue over it click on it see what you know it's, it's the real problem i think in the current media everything is like so uh biased by sensationalism it's just not news reporting it's just how can you make this story sound as worse as possible so people can or how can we excuse me how can you make this headline or title make people click so it has to be shocking it has to be you know terrible sounding and whatever that's the whole problem right now in the world i think many things can be told or reported on or explained by a very simple language without throwing all the like buzzwords into it but yet here we are and the media are just utilizing it for more clicks more ad money you know it's all the, the whole problem maybe i should start just throwing lego review titles with something like controversial and like you won't believe what this set has done to me review of a mario set you know M &R said what about the would you click on would you, would you click on that <laughs> A <laughs> real violent conflict in a Mario set? Question mark? And then review like, I don't know, the starter pack with Goombas and Mario stomping on them. Promoting violence! Is Mario promoting violence? Are Goombas safe? That's the whole narrative. <laughs> Honestly, I would hate myself for doing that to you guys. What minifigures come come with this set? We've got Bowser. Who else have um, this one. I mean, minifigures, uh, characters. Um, this yeah, set has sorry. Bowser. I have I have the starter pack mixed in, in the, on the table, so not a big um, kind of a problem. But I think this one comes with the uh, the ghost thingy, uh, this floating whatever that is, um, and I think it comes with the the little like um, flame guy. Is it Boo? I don't know their names, like, honestly. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> like, not too familiar with that, That's the funny thing, like, I come into Mario and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Actually, I think it's a ghost from Minecraft, if I'm correct. Here we go. I'm looking it up right now. It says Bowser, Dry Bones, Boo, and Lava Bubble. Oh, okay, and we have the Dry Bones, which is the, um, this guy, right? The, um, the dead turtle. Okay, few last steps. The, yeah, dry, dry bones is the uh, dead turtle looking uh, Koopa thing. Yeah, I think he's kind of like a s semi boss, right? In the game, he's kind of like hard to beat. You or step he's on like, He's like a tougher mob. You step on him, he just like. Uh, he like. Falls, like to he, he's uh, like a zombie, to he comes work. back to life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He falls into bones and they come back together. Okay. Which I don't think the, in it's the uh, Lego version it sort of represents too great. Yeah, okay. I'm speeding up to the finish line. Just wanna fi uh, build that uh, castle head, whatever you call it, but it's gonna be pretty cool. And then we assemble the castle. Do you think they might make a Mario set based on like Mario Kart? That might be quite cool. Oh, that would be amazing. I think I talked to Brian the other day that basically um, Mario Kart should be the next big thing for Mario Lego. Because I uh, think it's gonna like sell crazy well. 
the, the Lego makes uh, the speed champion with the cars, and they just need to make like go karts. I know, right? Yeah. Like Luigi throwing bananas and stuff. I'm kind of wondering how would they make um, Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong would be cool. Oh yeah. They just they they, they should just make uh, Super Smash Bros. You guys think he would be uh, for Donkey Kong? Do you think he would be brick built or like a big fig? I think he's gonna be like this guy, brick built. Okay. But okay. but honestly, a big fig w would work pretty well as well. I mean, they could have made this a big fake, but yet he's a brick build and he looks great. Okay. I'm speeding up. I'm kind of getting hungry, so I want to wrap this stream up, honestly. Uh, I think we've been... How long have we been going for now? Um, oh wow, almost three hours. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, it's about time when I kind of start slow things down and getting tired and hungry. So let's just build that Bowser guy and, I mean, his stone head. Okay. Ha, <laughs> it looks, starts to look pretty awesome. Uh, okay, last bit would be his eyes. Oh, I got a brick that's pretty beat up. It's kind of like scratched. Huh, too bad. That's a good question. I like that question. I'm looking forward to Crash Bandicoot 4. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I never played Crash Bandicoot for some reason. It was never a game for me. Are you guys buying the PS5? Um... I, I mean, I, I, I eventually will buy it, but I don't think I'm gonna buy it like first day. I might wait, maybe. It's it's pricey. Uh, do we know the pricing yet? It's like four hundred or more. I think it's four ninety nine. Yeah. I think because uh, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with my PS4 so far. I mean, not a biggie. Um, so I think I'm just gonna wait for the initial reviews and how people, you know. Um, how people see the, 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 the console, how it works, maybe either any launch day issues um, to first so people can figure it out and then I'm gonna just buy it when, when everything is good, like probably a few months in. I heard the, uh, the PS5 uh, game might be the new Spider-Man game like the uh, with the console. Oh, nice. Wow, he looks pretty awesome. He might launch with the uh, gate, the console, so... Yeah. Just knocked out. Just finish the set. It's pretty darn cool. Like it. Okay, uh, and now we go to the assembly phase. So we actually build the castle together. And it's like, I think it's an open kind of design, so you can do whatever you want with it. Oh, that looks oh, awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty darn awesome. So let's assemble all the pieces together. Get all the like lava fields around it and everything. I'm just gonna get my fan a bit higher. It's really hot in here. I have been denied, ignored and rejected all. No, you have not. I was just focusing on the build. Um, 
Sensationals, we have a good example of Cadwick uh, Bosman's death, Chadwick Bosman's death, Million Articles, what with the future of MCU, yeah, that's one thing, like, I've seen even people scalping Lego sets with the Black Panther and, the and trying to sell them at higher prices, that's the worst thing about, for example, trying to utilize the death of somebody famous. Vladimir, welcome! Oh, you're asking what the Polish course was? It was the J word. Um, it's kind of like, like a course to describe how things, how bad things are. It's kind of the thing. Okay. Um, bye, Ra bye, Rafi. Oh, I think he disconnected again. Okay. He's leaving. Oh, okay. See ya! I didn't see that. Um, okay, getting the castle connected, so we got that. So we get this thing on this side. Okay, and then... A tower, so it's cool. Like you get those modules and just like build them as as you please. Okay, and then this thing with the ghost goes here. Whoop. Just got the ghost off that. Okay. Where's that? I think I, I missed one of the um, gear tooth's teeth, so it kind of feels off off center. So I'm gonna have to correct that uh, because this feels off center by one uh, gear tooth, not a biggie. Okay, and then what? What's next? The walls are coming to the front. Where are my castle walls? Anybody? This is the one wall, and the second one should be here somewhere too. There's another one, okay, and now we add them here. So now it all comes together. Very nice. And one gateway. This side. There's one more on this side. Okay, now it's becoming pretty big. Um, okay. And a two by six. Right here in the front. Very nice. And the front gate of sorts. Another two by six. Well, it has quite a footprint. Bowser dude goes in here. There's the whole mechanism to like get him to fight you. Um, what was that? That was my phone, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Okay, um, this guy goes here. So just placing the characters. The ghost guy goes here. I keep saying like ghost guy, turtle guy. I know all the names in Mario. Okay, I think that's the castle. So, um, how do you start? You need the starter pack to begin? Okay, let's play the video. Oh, no worries, Rafi, you're, you're always welcome. I see you have some connection errors, that's fine. I'm finished anyway. I am finito. Oh, okay, so you go... Nice, so you get the Mario. Lego Mario time! Okay, so... 
Do I need uh, the starter? Um, I think I need the starter pipe to actually make it a level. So let's let's connect the starter pipe. So how about we just do a quick run through? So wait, where's the finish line? Oh, we still need to add the finish line from the starter pipe. Is that it? Okay. So imagine like this finish line is here, kind of. So I'm gonna move it here. So you start kind of start here. Just knock this guy off. Whoop. Just get point for this. Uh, you go. You can go like here. So, there you go, and you go. Extra time. You gotta like more time. You got more time. You can go here. You can go. Not that way, but yeah, you can go. It's kind of hard to balance this guy. Yeah, he's like sliding off. I'm so bad at this. Okay. Okay, some coins, you get the ghost. What was that? Gee, that was scary. Okay, so what else? We're gonna try to fight Bowser. Oh, there's like boss music playing. Okay, so you just... Fall ah, over! This is... Come on! Okay. <laughs> and then finish line. Sort of. So that's kind of how it works. So you can unlock the, the power-ups by smashing... Oh, I forgot this guy. There's another point for this guy. So forget about this one. You can, like, knock him off the platform. Um... I don't know how many points I got, I think like 60 something, that's kind of cool. So yeah, you need the starter pack to start the level and finish the level, but of course you can expand it, you can make a full on uh, play level. It's cool that you can like knock the arms off, it works pretty well. I like how Bowser, how you can... Oh, you. that's cool, because you, you first have to unlock the arms to actually make him move, so like... You really, you really gotta do it, because you do it, he actually, he actually moves forward, so when these are up, you can actually slide him down, other way there's no, it doesn't work other way around, so, don't get stuck, oh, his arm is, wow, and you get points for that, so, there we go, okay, move over. Nice, cool, I like it. I like how, how fun it is. So I kind of want to get more packs because of that. Okay, turn out. See you later. Uh, guys, and I think that's gonna be it. Just see if there's any videos. He has like 10 lives. Okay, gotcha. Okay, clear as, clear as day. Nice, so we finished the Bowser's Castle, I like it. I'm gonna probably uh, have my kids play with it and make their own courses. Um, yeah, it, it works pretty darn fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been three hours, uh, probably longer than I was planning for streaming tonight, but today uh, it was fun. I, I finished the set, it was pretty cool, I like it. It's been a blast to build it and it's pretty big as well. So once you connect all the pieces together and even add the starter pack, you're gonna have a significant chunk of your space taken. And I can even imagine building the entire Mario course with all the available packs. That would be pretty fantastic, honestly. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, so thank you guys. Uh, are you guys in the in Discord still? Are you guys in Discord? I'm still here. Still okay, here. awesome. Sorry, I wasn't muted at all on Discord. So yeah. I'm just gonna say bye to you first. So I'm gonna be just hanging, uh, leaving the stream in a second. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, uh, Big Star Wars boy and Owen, for hanging out with me. 
for uh, having me. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for being here. Me. So yeah, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disconnect Discord. So thank you so much, guys. As always, you're welcome in the streams. Uh, so peace out. I'm gonna disconnect myself from the chat uh, on Discord right now. Uh, see you guys next time, hopefully. See ya. All right, peace yeah. out. I, I had fun. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Take care. Okay, uh, and now I can say goodbye to the chat, so appreciate it. Oh, Wexbricks, you just joining. Yeah, we've been going for like three hours now, and I just finished, so it, this is where I uh, call it a day. Nara, Shema. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, but you can rewatch the stream if you want to. Thanks for joining, though. Yeah, we just built the Bowser's Castle, it was pretty fun. I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. It's a really cool set, I'm just show you one more shot from the top. This set is once all the, uh, this is from the starter pack by the way, but once you get all the modules in, it, it really takes a lot of space, so that's pretty cool. Um, functions are cool, you gotta unlock the arms first, then uh, slide the Bowser down and kill it while, while you move this and get the coins for that. Pretty darn awesome. With all the character packs, you can probably add a ton of adversaries before you get to the castle, you can get a full Mario course, I think that's what Mario is all about, to getting that, uh, that gameplay feature in the LEGO bricks, and that works marvelously well actually yeah so i'm ending the stream thank you guys so much for joining uh tune in for more streams of course i'm gonna be trying to do at least one stream a week hopefully sometimes it's possible sometimes it's not but i'm gonna try to do more streams of course um videos are coming as usual at least two three videos a week i just did the review for the old trafford stadium so check that out if you haven't already and i do appreciate you a lot thank you so much for joining and hanging out with me it was really fun real pleasure uh, I'm just gonna switch this back. It was a fun stream, I gotta say. I'm gonna go hang out with my family now and hang out and eat something I'm really hungry. <laughs> maybe play some games. I'm gonna play some Fall Guys tonight on PS4. So maybe if you're gonna play PS4 tonight, Fall Guys, you may you may see me randomly. I think my, my handle is Jack the Ripper or something like that. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for joining today. As always, hit the like, hit subscribe, hit everything you feel like hitting on a YouTube video or YouTube stream and make sure you do that to support my work here on the Cool Factor, right? Stay safe as the Brick Star Wars boy is saying. Thank you so much again for joining Discord today. Uh, stay safe and healthy everyone, take care. And yeah, you're always welcome, dude. Uh, on the streams, if I open Discord on the streams, you're always welcome as well. So thanks for uh, being uh, the first di Discord guest uh, for the first time on Discord today. Uh, as you said, that was the first time you ever joined us somebody's Discord on a live stream. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Awesome. It was awesome. Bye.